Have you heard of uh, Manscaped's new boxers? I have not. They have a jewel pouch. A jewel pouch. Yeah. Please explain this jewel pouch. So this is Manscaped's new boxers. This is how they come in a package of three. Huh. And hey, eyes up here. <laughs> they get these really cool boxers here. I like the packaging. Right? The packaging's fucking sweet. And they have this like pouch for your nuts. See how good those look? I like those a lot. Right? And they got this little like this this package here where your fucking nuts go. So my my nuts See that? fit safely in there. Your nuts will fit safely in this gold package. I need to get me some. <laughs> So well, I've never been the first one on like this before. This is weird. You've been the first one on. Actually, Nick's always the first one on. You're right. On, yeah. Man, Nick's, Nick's not coming today, so you're first. Oh, nice. Who's coming? It's gonna be me, you, me, and you. That's it. Nice. All right. Cool. <laughs> How you doing? How's life? Now, nobody <laughs> will nobody will interrupt you now. You can just talk yeah. as much as you want. Well, you might, so I'll have to talk. I don't, I don't ever interrupt. Yeah, but I, I'll still find a way to talk over you anyways. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter i'll still talk over you <laughs> how's canada good the weather's nice what are you eating tell me uh ground rice. turkey rice and some nando sauce i don't really utilize ground turkey enough i really should definitely start doing that yeah it's depressing when you come back to canada though because extra lean ground turkey here is like 93 7 at best and it's yeah. just ground turkey. In the U.S., I can get like ninety-nine one ground turkey breast. You know? I know, I know, I know. We don't yeah. have that luxury. We don't have that luxury here. No, I know. So I just any meals where I had oil, I just calculate the fat difference out and just have the ground turkey with less oil to compensate for the more fat. You know. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask you: the Italy show is coming up. Mm-hmm. Did we ever talk about nationals too, or North Americas? Uh, no, actually, before we get into that, did you see the, and I, I only know this because a whole bunch of people tagged me in it. Did you see the Generation Iron Power 30? Yeah, I did see it. <laughs> uh, those guys can suck it. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't even like, I didn't even know about it. So I was, but a bunch of people tagged me and I'm like. Well, obviously I saw a lot of it because half of the fucking raw team was on it. Like Chris was one, Dom's on yeah. it, Matt's on it. So I saw everyone on it on there, but then I'm like, look at the rest, rest of the list. I'm like, there's some weird shit going on here. <laughs> let's, let's but, I mean, Generation Iron is obviously like an old boys club, you know? We shouldn't take a look at it because I think we're going to might offend people that I'm not saying anything about the people that are on it. I just feel like, uh, you know what? I got a pretty successful podcast and I got a pretty successful supplement company. And I think I deserve a spot, but I- since they, since they didn't put me on, I'm going to make the RBP power 30 and I'm going to put myself on it. Okay. You can't put yourself to number one. Though. <laughs> no, I, I won't put myself. No, we'll do. I think we should do. I think, I think Chris or Arnold always have to remain numbers one and number two, you know, I'm not, I, I'm being dead serious. I think that's a really cool idea. I just think we should do it different. How do you want to do it? Are we voting? Or are we getting fan votes? That's interesting. But I feel like fans maybe will take it the wrong way and they'll just, They'll give their favorite bodybuilder. They won't be well, as a. I don't. Is, I don't no? Huh? No, I guess it's not. It's power thirty, not popular thirty. So yeah, because it's gets power thirty, meaning it's partly business. What did she say? She said contact Forbes and get them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the uh, the the thing I think I don't know if everybody realized it was business and bodybuilding. So yes, should we do a different one, like a power thirty? Let's call it something totally different. Like a top 30 influential people. Yeah. I mean, it depends what, what do you, what are you looking to see? You want to see who the best bodybuilders are. You want to see who the most successful people are. You want to see the most influential, the biggest followings. I mean, there's a million different outcomes. You can get how you pose the question, right? Well, it's kind of like we did the RBP awards last year. Yeah. But th- those are very direct. Like most. No, no, no. And, and that, yeah. That's a different thing. I just feel like this is a big enough platform in bodybuilding that we could do other types of 
lineups like that other types of awards or if not well, awards with but... your channel too like on youtube you can do those polls on the youtube wall right yeah but i think you can only do like uh if you do a poll you can only have like four options i think i'll try it but you can yeah. i don't know if you can have unlimited options so i don't think I you can can't have unlimited like you can't have 30 but you can have a few and you can do it kind of as like a tier system you know there hmm. must be some way to figure that out anyway i thought it was an interesting list hi guy hi before we get it, before we get into the power thirty, you went on a massive rant today. I hadn't, I haven't seen you that angry in a while. Are we live? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's going to change how we approach it. <laughs> no, I'll say what I said on the fucking thing. No, I don't think he said anything that's out of guy. I'm out of guy. Didn't see this. I've really been not going on Instagram a whole lot. To be honest. No, it's not on Instagram. We're on uh, circles, the Telegram circles. Oh. For, so we we have like a group chat that basically people can watch. Yeah, yeah. What's the what was the rant regarding? Oh, yeah. guy is uh doesn't like people who paint their nails. No, okay. Hold on. Back up. Back up. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. I love changing your words. I know. To make me look <laughs> fucking like a like like a worse human than I already am. <laughs> um So there's a couple people in my life um that I that I just know that lately have been so a, a, a certain kid started painting his fingernails this is a mgk thing right that started this i don't know yeah oh machine gun kelly is that what you're yeah, saying I think he's the one that's popularized that as of late he okay. did well i yeah. thought it was just a goth thing from like back in the day like I goth kid resurgence it's resurgence is because of mgk maybe okay. people that we know aren't doing it for that they're following yeah. people who then followed mgk the line down yeah. i see okay okay so, so go on go on guy so my one buddy who's painting his fingernails, who <laughs> black, black, you guys know, cause he came up to you guys at the podcast and I was like, he stuck his hand out and I was like, first time I saw. Him. So after that, I brought it up to him and I'm like, Hey bro, I said, can I ask you a question? Why do you paint your fingernails? He's like, well, why does it bother you? I go, I just am trying to understand you look like a real asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice Billy really said you look like an asshole. I, that. Uh, I said, <laughs> You, no man that I know with a cock and balls paints, can paint his nails and actually say that he enjoys painting his nails. He goes, well, I like it. And if I enjoy doing it, nobody's going to tell me different. And I'm like, okay. Then a couple of kids at the gym started painting their fucking fingernails. So my rant was this, okay? The amount of real men that exist in this world that can actually fucking take care of like their families and their loved ones or their significant other in my eyes are few and far between every, you know, back for the past, how many years, everybody's been talking about the simple fact that, you know, everybody wants, it should be on an equal playing field. Women shouldn't be looked at lower than men and yada, yada, yada. Well, we're men are bringing themselves and we're kind of blurring the lines with femininity with masculinity. When men start painting their fucking fingernails and wearing eyeliner I have, I, I, I have a problem with that now. And my correlation with that was I have plenty of, a lot of gay friends. A lot. And what's I, 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 I want to know what, what's a lot. Three. No. Two. Well, all I probably know about, I don't know about 15 people that are gay. Not no, friends. not no. You said friends. How many yeah, gay yeah, friends for, do you have? About 10 to 15. You have 10 to 15 gay friends. Yeah. yeah. Really? Something I'm very close with. No wonder you don't have a girlfriend. I know. Because um, he's gay. And it's only gay for gay. Um, so my point was this. Every gay friend that I have, you wouldn't really know they were gay, minus the fact that they just like the opposite. They, they like men and not women. Yeah, they like to fuck dudes. So there are gay people that walk around with the, hey, and with that flamboyant attitude. Sure. My thing is this. That's not real. That's fake. That's what to me when I, in my opinion, when I look at somebody like that, they are fit. They are overplaying the role of being gay. You can be a man and be gay. That's completely fine. But you don't have to be gay and then add all this extra stuff to it to make yourself look more gay. Question. And then on top of it, with guys that are straight that are walking around with eyeliner and and painted nails with all the fucking education that we have and and all the, the mental health and people being confused and sex changes. 
to me, that is a big component of why there's a lot of mental health and a lot of confusion, a lot of sex changes, a lot of misconception. Like, that's my problem with it. So, yeah, yeah you, I'm probably going to get bashed, but I, I, I have a problem with it. I, I agree with the, the foundation of your your issue, but I think, look, and I'm not, I'm not going to be wearing eyeliner or nail polish anytime soon, but I think you're extrapolating just what people see as fashion beyond what it is, you know? I think you've... I, yeah. You've lumped together right. a whole bunch of different yeah, things. Yeah, like I think I think you're I agree with certain things when you're talking yeah. confusion and, and when you're talking if you want to get into a transgender discussion, but I think when you're talking about painting nails and eyeliner, I think from those perspective of the people those that are doing it, it's literally just fashion. You okay, know? so can we can we let's parse See, out. I look wait at, a minute, I, wait a minute, I, wait a minute. It's just an, an Ian's point. If I looked at some so general public, right? If I looked at a man with eyeliner and nails, I'd be like, he's gay. Okay. Yes. Can I just Let's start here. Wait. So you said like six different things and you mashed them all into one rant. Yes. So let's take one out. So just take yeah. the nails first. Okay. Okay. So I think it's fucked up. I don't really get it, but I don't care. The fact that you have a problem with it, I think is like a little extreme. Like who gives a shit? Does anyone, does Ben or Lee Priest or any of those guys paint their nails? Ben wears, uh, Lee Priest wears eye eyeliner. Okay. So, you know, what does that say? Nothing. The other, but the other he thing, also agreed. He 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 agreed, disagreed and agreed with some things that I said. No, because you lumped, like I said, you lumped a whole bunch of things together. Yeah. But let me ask you this: so, like, hold on, I, I I know guitar players that paint their nails clear when they play the guitar because their nails get all fucked up. Okay, but wait a minute. Just hold paint on your nails for a clear. Just hold on for a second. I have a nephew in university, fucking genius. Like this kid's gonna be a fucking rocket scientist. Paints his paints his nails. He's one of these kids, like, doesn't really, does, I don't even think he has a driver's license, doesn't care about owning a car, doesn't really play sports. He's got a girlfriend for a long time, infatuated with physics and science, paints his nails black. So I see him at a family to get together. And I was like, hey, man, your fucking nails are painted. He goes, he goes yeah. I go, why? And I was kind of like, this is fucking stupid. I'm like, why are your nails painted? And he's like, I don't know. I like it. And I'm like, what do you like about it? He's like, I don't know. This is different. He's like, I did it and I thought it was cool. So I kept doing it. So I'm like, what am I going to say to that? Oh, you're a fucking idiot. I was like, all right. And I just don't care. Like See, that's the thing with fashion. It's hard to argue personal taste and style. Yeah. So it's like someone's just like, I like it. And then you're kind of like, okay. Yeah. I what are you going to say? What are you going to say at that? Okay. Point? Let me ask you a question. Is painting them all one color different than painting them like fucking pink and blue and yellow? Cause that's what one of my friends does. And I just go, <laughs> I, I don't I think your nails all black versus they paint them rainbow colors or purple or green. Is there a difference? <laughs> You're I, such a boomer guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm, I'm ranting on it and I'm at the range today shooting guns and IRs <laughs> and, and bow and arrows and people are like, yeah, okay, guys. What are you, what'd you say, Ian? It's trendy right yeah. now. What'd she say? She said it's just trendy right now. And I, I think that's, that's really what it's coming down to. Like okay. I said, this is an MGK derived thing that guys think it's, cool and they like how it looks so they just do it you know but this is what i mean guy regardless of where it came from or whether it's oh, trendy girl, hold on ask melissa if she would even open a conversation to date a guy that painted his nails babe what, i guess courtney too um how would you feel about the attractiveness of a guy that's painted? yeah ask courtney and 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 melissa you know if they, their nails is in right now it is yeah like the, <laughs> Courtney doesn't even know, so that's good, I guess. I love her. To be honest, what, okay, you go Like, if you saw a guy with painted over? nails, is that like throwing him into the, the yeah. garbage can right away? I, no, what, what, deal, what, deal breaker. I need it too. It's yeah. fucking out. It's I, a hard yeah. out. They both say it's a hard out, yeah. <laughs> but what, what am I saying that's wrong? Because, guy, it's like, who cares? What's the big deal? But she also said if I started doing it now, she wouldn't care. Yeah. I mean, the but, only person I feel like who can pull it off with a hot girlfriend is Machine Gun Kelly. Well, he's the one who started the trend. Oh. That's what I said, yeah. That's the only guy. So she she literally, it's like the only person I can pull it off is Machine Gun Kelly. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, you know. Ask her if Guy's sister Nino could pull it off. <laughs> 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 no. I'm sorry. Guy, you can pull off anything. But like, but like Ben, Ben could pull I it off. Sure. Ben but could we, totally pull it off. If Ben had his nails painted and I saw him at dinner, I literally wouldn't even think twice. He totally it. would not even shock Neither me. Neither would I, but I look at him and be like, you're an idiot. It would just be Ben. I would be like, I bet you're an absolute idiot. Yeah, but, like, I wouldn't expect this. You know, I'd be like, it's enough. You look like a pirate. Now you got to look like a gay. Okay, pirate. wait, guy. I have a question. <laughs> what's the difference? What's the difference between someone painting their nails and someone getting like a neck tattoo? 
or nipple piercing. Because if I saw it, like, I would never get a neck tattoo. I'm like, Neither that's crazy. That's crazy. My, yeah, my dad would cut my neck off. But when I see people with a neck tattoo, I'm like, yeah, it looks good on that guy. Like Frank. But looks sick Frank on Frank. Frank has a neck tattoo, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so does Ben. So what's the difference yeah. if they paint their nails or they get a neck tattoo? It's the same. It's just well, another thing. he's associated. He's just, uh, neck to tattoos aren't oh, generally no, watch associated this. with femininity watch this. or painting nails. Uh, like. He's associating the, the painting of the nails with gayness. No, with femininity. No, he said gay. <laughs> well, no, but oh. but because both, both. gayness, but because he's also correlating gayness and femininity, so That's it's the true. same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, the okay. same time. Yeah. Okay, so now we can move to the next piece, which is why are uh, if you homosexual... agree with me? Like, comment below. Why... <laughs> You're probably gonna get a lot of people agree with you, and I'm not saying I don't agree with you. Like when I saw my nephew, I was like, ah, it's a little fucked up. But I'm saying I don't. Like if you were gonna much. fight somebody, and there was a guy there with painted fingernails. And a guy there with no paint. Would you want to paint fight the guy with painted fingernails or the guy with no paint on his fingernails? I ben, would, does he I look would, like Ben? You I know? wouldn't assume. Yeah, if Ben, yeah, ben is Ben is Ben standing at the bar, I'm not fighting Ben. Yeah. If it's full size <laughs> Ben with painted nails, I ain't trying to fuck with that. You know? <laughs> um, I would just think that the guy with paint his fingernails, I could probably beat his ass a lot faster. I, don't yeah, or just, I would never crazy, assume. Or he's some never... crazy motherfucker that's just like into whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah, he's been doing jujitsu for 20 fucking years. And he's like, yeah. ah, I'm painting my nails. I'm just going to not hesitate yeah. and stab you in the throat, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, the second part. Why I know are... it sounds bad to say. I just say it. Let me move on. One second. The next you don't second. have to like it. You don't have to like it at all. The second part is the flamboyancy <sighs> of gay men. Why, mm -hmm. why, why does this bother you so much? <laughs> because it's fake. That's fake. Why is it fake? I'm going to Google this. No, no, just wait a minute, Ian. Because nobody walks around going, oh, hey, how are you? Like, what? that's not real. Okay, but wait a minute. If you No, were... that's not real. Just let me ask you a question. That would be like me walking around all day being like, oh, good day, Fuad. How are you doing? Let me ask you a question. If you're a homosexual man and you like gay men, or you like men, Penis. you probably have a little bit of a feminine side to you, most likely. Right? If you like men, you probably are a little effeminate. I don't know. The guys that I know that are gay just like penis and they dress like dudes. Yeah, I know guys like that too. I know gay guys that are just like normal, normal everyday dudes. Oh, why can't you just be gay without the bells and because whistles? Because maybe they feel a little feminine and they want to act that way because that's what they like. And wear a shirt that says I feel feminine. But why not? Why can't they talk that way though? Does that, does that bother you so much? <laughs> because that to me, that's like being a poser. But what if they actually feel that way though? You can feel emotionally a certain way. You don't have to sound like that. No, but what if that's like, what if they're not making it up? What if they just feel that way? Go ahead. This is, a, this is something that I'm kind of like, I don't really understand now the more I think about it. I'm on the but fence about it because I've said exactly what guys said before, but- Well, no, now I'm actually trying to think like, is this a staged act or- It does, has to be. Or no. does whatever, like, wait, this sounds bad, but does whatever inside you makes you gay also make you talk like that, you know? Okay, wait, I got an example for you. But they're not, look, not all gay guys talk like that. It's a very no, no. small percentage that are the overly flamboyant. It's not the vast percentage. Okay, exactly. but I have, I have an example for you. <laughs> it's probably stupid, but so I have a friend who went. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but wait, because here it comes. So I have a friend who went away to the UK for school. And when he came back, he had a fucking accent. Yeah. Like he would, he was, had that same kind That's of. That's because he was around the same type of people. So you're saying that if a gay guy that doesn't sound like that hangs out with a bunch of guys that are flamboyant as fuck, he's going to fucking have that. Hey. He may, he may adopt some of the speech. Yeah. Yeah. That may be true. I've been friends with Flex and I've been over to Britain a hundred times. I don't come back sounding like anything. You didn't live there. If you lived there for long enough. Right. I think this is a scientific thing that it has more to do with age and. There's, there's things like that. Like I, if you're under a certain age, you're a lot more proponent to have like a change in an accent like that. And over a certain age, it's a very low percentage, you know? I think it's like, I'll, I'll give you an example. It's like, uh, I bought a motorcycle. And when I bought the motorcycle, I bought all the Harley gear. I'm like I'm a fucking motorcycle guy. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe they're like, I'm out of the closet. I want to be as gay as I can be. Like they're living the life. You know what I mean? Just Where and the, and then there's other guys. If guy, you want to like, live the life, just take the dick. No, but I'm saying like maybe there's other gay guys yeah. like like Ian said that are like just dudes. They're like I don't have to live the whole life. I don't have to tell everybody. No, no, look, I, 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 the the gays that are overly flamboyant like that is definitely not the majority. Like it's a small percentage. But on that same note, there is a lot of gu straight guys who are fucking feminine as shit. You know, True. so 
but they're not gay, so we don't think they're gay, you know? Like, I bet you, Guy, I bet you're, you're partly right. I'm sure there's a percentage of them that are trying to overplay the whole okay, thing. Okay, I have gay friends that call those type of gay people certain names. Yes. And hate yeah, them. I know. Yeah. I've heard that before. Yeah. But I'm not, all I'm saying is, all I'm I saying is I bet you there's a like percentage. You know, all, huh? all I'm saying is I bet you there's a percentage of those people that really feel that way. And then there's a percentage of those people that are like pretending because they want everybody to know they're gay. It's kind of like being like extra vegan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Or like there's, ve profit. there's vegans that don't tell everybody and don't shit on everyone. And then there's vegans that are like yelling at you if you have a steak. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like that, right? Some people yeah. just want are a hundred percent. What? What are you pointing at? Oh, a deer. Yeah. Is that a moose? Uh, deer head? Yeah, I got two, three of them. When? They were up there when we were there. They were here when you were here. Oh. oh, oh, you're talking about vegans. I'm like, did you go hunting? I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking lost. <laughs> uh, what else did you say? You hate the flamboyancy. You hate the painting of the nails. And there was a third thing. Eyeliner. <laughs> that kind of falls in with nail polish, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's in there with nail polish. So the confused part, I'm with you 100% on. Thank you. The confused part, and I only say that in terms of kids, kids like under 16. Yeah. Or maybe under 18 even, I don't know. That I will definitely agree with you because I've seen, they've they've shown like the scale of. I had, My dad was in the car today with us and, we went, and my I, I go, dad, I go, you were born in 54. I go, you ever you remember guys walk around painting their fucking nails? And I, my dad goes, no. no. Yeah, but that's also a, but people will also say the flip side of that argument is also that it's acceptable. So guys are more apt to do the things that they like because they're not going to be shit on for them. Yeah. That's my point is do what you like, but you don't have to fucking be fake about it. I feel like a lot of the stuff. That I think we can all agree there. I, I feel think like a lot of the stuff is fake and overplayed for no reason. But wait a second, guy. I think that goes for any genre, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's guys that are fake bodybuilding that aren't really, don't really love the, the guys sport. That are, guys that are fake. And, 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 he, and we. What did you say? In front of them all. Or on the complete opposite side, guys that are fake, overly masculine, you know? Yeah. Like deep in their voice and trying to act macho. and Like know? that guy, like that guy we talked about. That was like, uh, you, you, you own women. Oh, well, Andrew, Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. <laughs> oh <laughs> we were talking about we were talking about andrew Tate like him like i think he's a poser i think he overplays the masculine part i think he's a douchebag sure. well yeah. he's a he's a but that's that could also be because it's a marketing ploy that's really the worked character. for him yeah but yeah. if that really is who he is i would call him fake right to his fucking face but that's a that's an oxymoron because if it is really who he is then it's not fake i don't think he could be that dumb <laughs> you can definitely be that masculine there's people that grow up like that that have that one one you're that way you're that fucking guy you're just you're not an asshole i'm saying you're that masculine you're like i hunt and i i'll beat yeah, you but up. i'm not like i don't ever say that i own women and girls fucking when i'm dating no, but my property I, and i think this guy has right, babe? i think this guy <laughs> i think this i think andrew tate is a certain way but plays it up for a character well, he wants I, to be he wants to be polarizing polarizing is what gets views and yes. comment and engagement yes. you know yeah if yes. he said things that were just pc then no one would watch him you know so last time we talked about it i said something about him not being deplatformed because i think it's crazy that they would just erase his life like that erase all avenues of making money and erase yeah, you I know like the fact that he was taking out those is insane yeah but then people said in the comment section that he was charged with trafficking women and charged with this and charged with that. And I'm like, if he's charged with these things, why isn't he in jail? Mm -hmm. Right? Like you can't just deplatform somebody because of- You can be uh, accused of many things, but charged yeah. with different. That's what I was going to say. I'm like, I didn't know any of those things. So if any of them are true, then that's, that's horrible. But like, yeah. if he's not charged and he's just accused, that's not, we can't- Yeah, I think we were all, I think what you were saying is based off his content, it's not fair to deplatform him. Well, I think, Somebody was saying, I can't remember. Like exactly. If he's doing other things that are illegal outside of it, and this is part of the punishment of or of them, Let's get him on the circles. Yeah, <laughs> then then I understand it. But if it's just someone saying that they think that he should be deplatformed because of his content, I think is wrong. I think he should have the right to post whatever the fuck he feels like. You know. I think the reason he's so popular is because he's unapologetically masculine. Well, I think because he says some things that you'll listen to it, and like one in every couple things you'll agree with, and then you're like. Yeah, he's right, you know, and then it's like over and then the rest is like kind of over the top, you know, I know. But what I'm trying to say is like we live in an era where being masculine is negative. Yes, it's demonized for sure. Yeah. So men feel, yeah, like but you know what, Fuad, I'm, I'll say this. 
maybe part of the reason I feel that way and I'm so strongly about it is because of in part of what you just said. Yeah, no, I agree with you, guy. I did, you just man, did you just mansplain to us, guy? <laughs> what? Are you are you gonna manspread us next? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Not mansplaining, guy. What? Wait, wait, I'm so lost. What are you talking? About? <laughs> what? You're explaining no. from a male point of view only. You're mansplaining. You're mansplaining. Why? <laughs> He's too manly to even get what mansplaining. Is. <laughs> so you know, last bite. Oh, last bite. The last bite girl. Yeah. The last bite knows that. The last bite. <laughs> last bite knows that I'm single. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we, I, I haven't talked to her in a very, in quite some How long time. did you date last bite for? She's the one I bought the ring for. Oh my God. <laughs> How did you buy a ring for this girl if you hated her so much? It was in the beginning of your relationship. But you noticed from the beginning that she was last bite. Yeah, but that didn't bother me. She, I still like. See, she that's what they see. See what they say. If there's a red flag at the beginning, you ignore it because you're fucking. But yeah. that red flag will come up later. Yeah. See, it, I take the red red flags and I like make a fucking plethora with them. <laughs> you build a house of red flags. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm like, come on in, guys. So anyway, so we start talking again, bro. And she goes, "Are you gonna tell Fuad?" Because she like now she like she she knew you from before. Yeah. Oh, this fucking chick bought a fucking motorcycle and got a sleeve tattoo. I'm like, awesome. Get idiot. one. Idiot. No. Get, get one. I go, well, you better find somebody in the biker gang. She goes, why? I go, because I'm not dating someone with a bike. Oh, shut up. I wouldn't. Chicks on bikes is hot. What are you talking about? You ever seen a hot girl on a bike? It's fucking hot. It's last, like, it's no, last, last person I saw on a bike hit the back of my car and I almost killed him. I'll have to say it's only really girl hot when girls drive sport bikes. No, that's not true. It's a sport yeah. bike. Watch this. I mean, you're kind of you're kind of venturing into frumpy dyke territory. No, no, no. It depends on the bike. It can be a sportster Harley. It doesn't have to be a fucking. Well, this is this is my issue. bike. She just got her license and then bought a bike, and she doesn't even know how to drive. And I go, "You're an idiot." Well, jump into it, you know. No, that's she what did. I did. I bought a bike after I got my license. So what? You're both idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Look, watch, check it out. Here we go. He's gonna pull up chicks on bikes, bro, just to fucking see. She's hot, right? Yeah, see where his Google search is here. Hot, right? Look. Hot girl on a Harley. <laughs> <laughs> type in, just type in girl. Type in girl. All they did is just take hot models and put them on Harley. Okay, fine, girl. That's not real people that drive. Okay, fine, Harley. girl on a Harley. Okay, wait. No, type what in real have? girls who drive Harleys. Real girls on a Harley. These are real girls. No, these are all photo shoots. And girls. Yeah, look at that. 50 year old. That, okay, that's real. That's, no, that's that real. girl on the right side. That girl, oh, no. has, a, that girl has a crack. <laughs> that girl has an arm tattoo and a crack pipe in her pocket. Yeah, and she, you know she smokes a fucking two packs a week of like native <laughs> cigarettes, you know? <laughs> you guys are fucking hilarious. Uh, I, I think I think hot girls on Harleys is hot. I don't, look, you I'm going to say there's obviously some hot girls that look drive. Look at that. That's but, hotter. That's hotter than a sport bike. Wait, wait, but if you took the vast majority of women that are driving these kind of bikes, they're going to be dogs. <laughs> Versus, if you take a panel of the girls driving, I like, agree with you. Six hundred pictures, they're going to okay. be hot. You know? But that's mainly because younger people, men and women, generally drive sport bikes. Yes, and you, know, you have to remember. Fouad is now on the Harley Davidson committee, so he knows a no, lot about no, bikes. No, no, no. I'm agreeing. No, I'm agreeing with Ian, but it's it's mainly because I think the older you get, the more you get into cruisers, and the younger you are, you like, probably yes. I don't disagree with you. If you take a hot girl and put her on a Harley, she's all of a sudden less hot. But the women driving Harleys are not hot girls. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, your your ex is driving a motorcycle. Is she coming back to your life? Yeah, she is. Uh, I don't know. Is she, are you going to sit on the back and like hug her, you know, and drive on? <laughs> okay, look. Yeah, come on. Come on now. <laughs> this is what we want to see. We can't even tell if she's ugly or not. <laughs> this is what we want to see, though. Hot chicks on sport bikes. Do, doing wheelies down the fucking highway, you know? I thought about getting a sport bike. Yeah. They're just so fucking uncomfortable, man. I know. That's a nice fucking bike. Okay, anyway. Um, so are we what? What are you texting? What are you laughing at? With you. Oh, you text. Me. What no, you? I didn't text you. Oh, okay. Um, texted her. I said, We're talking about your you and Fuad's dumbass 
Just when are point. you when are you getting back together with her? Listen. And what are you gonna do if she takes the last bite? Are you gonna throw her out? New one. No, the last bite wasn't a deal breaker, it just was like, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. What are you talking to Melissa about about guys' girlfriend? Yeah, Melissa was back? asking if you you and your girlfriend broke up, and I said yes, now yeah. it's a new one. He said, Yeah, I, I I got broken up with some too nice. Uh, he's okay. too nice. That's not a reason. Anyway, so she's gone. So last bite's coming back. No, I didn't see, don't see she's gonna watch this. What I, I want to ask you is if last bite comes back and she takes the last bite, are you gonna throw her out? No. Nah. Or is, gonna be funnier now? or is it going to be funnier now because we because it's, it. it's a thing now so. I, you guys you guys forget to realize i i i'm too blunt and wide mouth to not say anything when she first started doing that i go well, well now it's going to be funny you can rip on her and it'll be funny. <laughs> i'll video her i'll be like if Wait. you do that i'll be like if you do it i'm going to video you and Does send she it know to do you said she watches the podcast do you, she knows you call her last bite uh, I she knows that I I told her I referenced her. That's she's known in the podcast as last bite. Oh my god, <laughs> she could never go out with you because she's gonna get roasted now. If she ever shows herself on the podcast. Her, when I dated her, her nickname I her nickname was snacks. Why? Because she ate snacks all day. Huh. Some girls do that. Is she heavy? No. Oh, I'd show you a picture, but then I'd get fucking ripped. <laughs> yeah, just put her up here. We can all actually check wait. Her. I'll send you the picture. Is she hot? Oh, she just sent me a picture of her on our fucking bike. What a dumbass. Send that to me. I want to see if she's like Ian said or if she's like what I said. She's an idiot. <laughs> My case is looking good here. <laughs> um, Check your phone, you idiot. Are we going to discuss the Power 30 or are we going to move on from that? What's the Power 30? Oh, she looks good. That's uh, That's like my first bike. She got a Honda Rebel. Um, what you, you have what? a second bike already? You've been driving for two months because I've been first of all, it's four months. You upgraded quickly. I upgraded after the first week. So, so when you when you got your driver's license, you got a car, and then two months later, you got a new car. No, I got a motorcycle, and I realized it was way too small, so I got a motorcycle that fits. Yeah, in, in his years. defense, in his defense, that bike is way too small for him. Yeah, you're not that big, bro, dude. I'm 260 pounds. What are you talking? You know, about? you've been dieting for four months, and you've been too sick. Just, to I know. It does, yeah, that just doesn't work. He's supposed reason. to be running and losing all this weight. Every <laughs> podcast, he's uh, 260, 260. I it know. just doesn't change. I'm right around 260. I'm about 260. I'm 260. I think because every time I get to like 253, I want to reward myself. And then I binge and I go back up to 260. So back up to 260. Definitely healthy. Yeah. Well, no one said I'm healthy. Um, okay. I wanted to talk about the Italy show. Right, you watched all that football and you suck at tackling. That's weird. Dude. Dude. You played college football and I manhandled you like a puppet. Like, bro, nothing. you know what? The next time I see you, I don't care where we are. We're just, I'm going to say, lay down right now. Yeah. I don't care if we're in the In the street. middle of a ball. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. When I You're come gone, to your house. I'm going to fuck you. When I come oh. to your house, right on the driveway, we're just going to, I'm going to slam your head on the I'll cement. turn the lights on right now. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you. I'll be laying down when you pull up. Anyway, I bought a trailer so I could bring my bike and go for a ride with uh, Last Bite. <laughs> she just texted me too. Tell Fuad I'll go to Sturgis with him. We can go see Mount Rushmore. No, she didn't. You want to see the text? No, it's okay. Um, anyway, I wanted to discuss the uh, Italy show. Bodybuilding? Yes, bodybuilding. Uh, okay, small show. Uh, not a ton of big names. I have Anton Bippus winning. Who? <laughs> <laughs> <You just been. laughs> yeah i mean i don't know a ton of names on here i'm gonna say so to jamie joe hall uh, i'm still named the, the the most notables jamie joe hall muhammad el aman roman roman and then andre. uh andre andre, andre oh muzi and vlad fabio, you know who, you know who fabio is too okay and then you have long hair and that's vlad yeah yeah vlad i know too okay so should we should we should probably pull up some of these people right well, some of them are the, there's Fabio right there in the comments. First one. Second one. There's Fabio. Okay. Oof. I don't know Fabio. I don't remember we, Fabio. We've this guy. We, we've talked, shown him before on this show. I think he's a little light in the legs. Yes. Compared to the upper body. He's a little light in the beard. That's going to be a problem. And then if we go back. On, podcast pop. Where the fuck is that list? Here. All right, Dad. Love you, Mike. They're probably um, 10. I don't think so. No. 
No, I just want to show a few people. So we'll go to go to the biker chick. You're okay. on Google. No, you have Instagram open already. No, I know. I want to leave that page there, so I just keep going back to it. Uh, I want to take a look at Roman because he posted some recent photos. He looks good, man. Don't you hate how when you type in a name like that now it comes up with all these things first? Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. never can fucking get the people, you know. So I don't think it says his weight here. He looks fuller though. Yeah, he does. Does definitely look fuller. I always wonder though, Ian and or, or guy, you guys can both comment about this. When you lose tissue in a diet. It takes time to get it back. So is he going to be able to get back the muscle he lost getting ready for Dallas? Do you or... think he lost a lot of muscle getting ready for Tampa? Oh, dude, come on. When I saw him in Tampa, we saw, we, you were in Tampa. We saw him together. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know if that was severe flatness and just over dieting or if that's loss of muscle, you know? Okay, I'll put it this way. When he was 295, he already had some striations in his glutes. Yeah, no, I know that. And then he weighed in at 240. Yeah. <sighs> There's no fucking way he lost. I, know, I remember seeing pictures of him at like 275. He looked How like tall is he? I never met him in person. I think he's like, he's like an inch, five nine, five, five ten. ten. Yeah, I think he's like an inch or two taller than me, five ten, five eleven. But I, I think if you go from two ninety six with partially hard glutes to two forty, you lost some fucking muscle. So I don't know what I'm asking is I don't know how fast he can get that tissue back for this show, or did he just lose it till the only <laughs> the main gaps I see, and I love Roman. Our arms and back. Yeah. I think you can kind of get away with arms sometimes if the rest of your physique, like his legs are really good. I think the back is more the issue. So I think he's got... A see, the shot. problem is the first oh. shot they see is your front double bicep, and that was always my worst shot, and that's his worst shot. I don't think it's his worst shot. I think it's back One of his double. worst shots. Yeah, it's not... Yeah. But I think his back double is the one that's like, look how. I don't know because he's got such good conditioning as glutes and hands that it helps a lot. You know? I don't know what he weighs here, but whatever he weighs, he shouldn't do anything. He should just go on stage like this. No, right? he looks honestly like he could still eat up from here. Yeah, yeah. He still looks a little on the flatter side to be here. I think he could be yeah. fuller than this. Yeah, he's crazy fucking peeled. Yeah, yes, I mean, this is where he needs to be. No, don't push conditioning any more than this. See, his back looks good there. Yes. I thought he was going to do a back double. When he's when he hit, it's when he hits the shot that it goes a little flat. Okay, so we got a good eye on what Roman looks like. What do you guys think? Um, Jamie looks really good too, huh? Jamie does look really good. I want to actually take a look at him too. He sent me some pictures today. He fucking, he actually is looking really balanced. Yeah, he does. I've been very impressed by his uh, his updates. His back has come up quite a bit. I really like his front lat. This is posing at the lair. Let's see if there's a recent. No, keep going down. He posts, yeah, like these. Yeah. This is five days ago. So a week, two weeks out. Side chest looks good. Hamstring seems arm, a little... Arm looks huge there. Yeah. Hamstring, he's a little bit better drop. Yeah, legs as a whole from the side, but he's very tall, so... Yeah, yeah. It's a crazy... Well, I know. It's... Obviously, we're being nitpicky, but the back... I don't know what he's doing there, but... Touching his butthole. Find a video here. It's still a little thin. Yeah, I mean, look, he's a fucking gigantic human. It's going to take him a long time to fill his physique out, but I know. But when I when I say going in the right direction, when I say it's a little thin, like that looks really good. That's a really good yeah, shot. For love his front lat. Yeah. I'm wondering in comparison to like someone like Vlad, right? But then it also becomes a shape thing because I feel well, like Vlad... you also have to remember that he is very tall and big structurally. Yeah. So he's going to have a lot more stage presence, even if he's less muscular, you know? Yeah. Let's, go, yeah. let's see if he goes to the back here. Yeah. His back has come up a lot, man. Yeah, that looks not bad. Yeah. Be impressive. That, that's good for somebody fucking... There's a lot six, of lat width there. It still looks like you need some more thickness, like, through the center. But the look at the lats. Yeah. The lats are so yeah. wide here. I'd like to see what it looks like with that leg back. He's like got the mid mid detail. back, I think he needs a little more thickness, but the lats are, yeah, the width is a lot. Hand, better. He's, he's losing a little hand there. He's not flexing this. No, he needs that. to stay on those hands. Yeah. yeah. His legs as a whole, it seems that he's not quite posing. Like here, even you can see his quads. Are he's going to be a contender for that number one spot. It's crazy how big his quads are for his height, though. Huge. Yeah. 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 Good yeah. abs. Abs and thighs. Look at that. Look at the fucking feathering in his quads. Well, his, con his conditioning is definitely going to be there. That's so. good shot. That side shot is nice. All right, so we're going to take a look at him. Let's take a look at Vlad. Vlad, I'm not a... Uh, where is Vlad? 
Does anybody know his Instagram? Yeah, is it Vladis? Is it Vlad with a Y? Vladislav? Uh, type in this, yo. Go ahead. S U H. Still nothing. O R U. Has he got okay. me blocked? No, just wait. We'll type the whole thing. Uh, C H K O. There okay. he is. The Impaler. He's shadow banned. <laughs> what do you right. do? There he is. So his he's weight. Not, he's, he's always looked so fucking nuts, man. It's crazy how big he is, but I think his waist is going to hold him back. Oh. Did I freeze? No, I think so. I don't think it's me. Can you hear me or no? Yeah, you froze for a second. But I don't know if it was me. Okay, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I think his waist is going to hold him back a little bit. Like here, sure. here it looks okay, but this front relax shot, it just takes up too much volume. Yeah, I mean, look at that chest thickness. Who is this guy? You've seen Vlad before in other shows. Last year he did a few shows. Is, is he, he always... Italian? Is he Italian? I don't no. think so. No. Um, you he's got a he's got a Jack. ton of muscle, but Jack. like I think he might be Czech. I think... yeah. I mean, look at his chest and lats are so bubbly. You know, I need this whatever light he does, like with a fucking ring light or something. He I reminds gotta... me of like a Paco Batista. Yes. 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 I think a little prettier. Paco was definitely a little uglier, but uh, it's it's just like a a mound of fucking. Great, crazy grainy muscle. You know? Oh, it says he's in Italy. He's not from Italy. This no, is, yeah. uh, I know why guys are elongating their waist to try to make it look more narrow, but it's not helping him. No, I did like, and like with Nick, when Nick started to get that ab control and flex it, it made his shots look so much better. Yeah, like this is, see, he's doing that to make his waist look narrower, which is he's fine. sticking it out and making it look big and long. You know, it just makes, it takes up so much volume in the shot. Like it just yeah. looks like so much of his body is stomach. Yeah. He was big bro he's yeah. a big having a hard time with his stomach there though i a guy i definitely don't think they're gonna i don't think they're gonna let him win only because of that yeah i agree because from all his other shots like this is fucking insane this is fucking insane yeah i mean the but muscle is ridiculous you know but i think they're really taking a hard stance on the on the stomach so unless he yeah. comes in and is able to control it it could be a problem just don't eat yeah uh yeah but then when you have that I've, that's you know what it's funny you said that because i try to do that shit because my stomach was wider and it doesn't, then the rest of the muscle you put on just looks like shit because now you're flat. Yeah. And the ratio to your waist doesn't even look any better at that point. You know, what'd you say you little fuck? <laughs> and you go, my waist is thick. I go, you eat $50 worth of McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> want a thin waist with that? What do you, I don't understand. You think you go a Diet Coke with it, you're going to have a thin waist. I thought the Diet Coke would make it all even. Yeah. It fucking balances it right out there. Fucking mathematician. All right. Uh, Muzi. Let's take a look at Muzi. He's going to be up there. The My Italian is, brother. Nickname is the Impaler. I think of somebody with a huge cock when they have that. Yeah. <laughs> I think of like a horse. Okay. Muzi looks good. Muzi could win. Muzi could win this one. Yeah, Muzi for me, it all just comes down to his peak, man. Like he, he's just inconsistent in that stage look, you know? He looks really Italian, eh? Like yeah, this, so... is, this, is the, this is the best I've seen him look so far this year, though. Hey, guy, I... like, you could see this guy anywhere. He'd be like, that guy's Italian. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Uh, he could definitely make a fucking pot of sauce. You can just yeah. hear him say, like, you can hear the Italian accent in this picture. Emilio Fratello. Look at, the condition, look at the condition on those fucking quads, though. Yeah, if he has this condition on stage, I think he could win. That's what I'm saying. If yeah. he can translate this look to the stage, because, like, obviously that's a little filtered there. Yeah, uh, but if he can translate that to the stage, he'll be very hard to beat because his shape is nice too. Like he's got a good taper, and he's a decent sized guy. His back shots are a little on the weaker side, but he looks really good. Well, I'd be careful with the shape thing because one thing I noticed about Muzi is when he tries to fill out too much, yeah, he that stomach, it. that stomach yeah. does get a little bit carried away. So he sometimes has really good shape, and then sometimes when he tries to go too full, yeah, it ruins, ruins his look a little bit. Uh, we take a look at oh, another guy that could win, uh, Muhammad Alaman. Yeah. Uh, where is I don't know who that is? You know, yeah, you do. He he did really well at a couple shows. You'd be surprised how much I don't know these days. Yeah, he did. He had a good year last year. How do you fuck? I can't find his thing now. I was a lot more well versed with people who competed when I competed. Why don't you follow the sport anymore, guy? You're not I do. I just You're don't not a bodybuilding fan. Yeah, okay, you know, it's uh, IFBB Pro. Wait a minute, I found it. Muhammad El Amam. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to your people. I think he's Egyptian. It's close enough. Kuwait. No, well, that's a Kuwait I, win. I think he's Egyptian. Him. I'm not sure. Um, he lives in Russia, though. Find a photo here. He there trains with like Fedorov and shit, right? Look how big this motherfucker is. His stomach is weird. It's like it's not wide, but it kind of sticks out at the top. He doesn't have big abs. It's weird. 
It's I think because his, his midsection is kind of short and his rib cage is a little wide, but his waist is kind of small. So this it creates a weird kind of like, boop, you know? Yeah, he hasn't posted anything recent. But he did do very well at some shows last year, so I do know they'll be looking for him. Yeah, I competed against him a couple times last year. I think there's a stage shot where he looks Yeah, that's one from last. That's the, K, uh, the Middle East Egypt the, show. The Egypt show Egypt last show. year. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is enough to beat Muzi. If Does he have a sporn like bicep? Uh, it looks yeah, like it kind of looks like it there. The right high, one. Yeah. High insertions? I don't know. Crazy um, water there, though. Fuck. Yeah, can this beat Muzi, you think? Yeah, it's possible. He's good from the back, too. He's got really good back shots as well. He's got a lot of muscle. It's really just his stomach when he... Because he, he pushed Justin in this indie show, didn't he? Yeah, like that yeah he, did. he did. He yeah. did really well last year. Yeah, and he's got really good back shots. So I, I yeah. think if that's where he's going to gain some ground against Muzi, it's going to be the there. quads on this fucking guy, man. Yeah. I think he might be able to win this show. Mm, I mean, it's not out of the question, no. Okay, let's make some bets. Wait, here's some comparisons. Here's Muhammad. Here's Kuklo, Ian. I think Muhammad wins this shot. Yeah, I mean, in that picture, you could definitely make an argument for it. I'm just, I'm just joking. I want to see if you freak out. I mean, he, looks, he looks good in that shot. <laughs> but he does look really good here. And then look at the back. Like yes, he's, he's good from the back, yeah. I think if, you're, if I'm looking at this lineup, what held him back was his stomach. See, so yeah, it's a little bit fuller than... Like yours is vacuumed, Steve's is crunched in. Uh, Klahar's a little off here, but it's actually better than other shows for him there. So, yeah, I don't know. He's got a good good chance. Okay, hey, were my glutes shredded there? Like, come on, <laughs> go back. Look at that man. But let's see how far away it is, and it's so structured that it's filled it's a filter. Look at my glutes. Come on, They're, they look pretty good. <laughs> It's a filtered picture of a question. Guy, have you heard about this? Ian's mad at me because it says his glutes aren't striated. Because he has like more of like a granite ass than a glute. Yeah, he's got like a cross I don't I don't take offense. He's got like, more of like a Jay Cutler butt. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Got a Jay Cutler booty. Okay, let's make some bets. Fuck. Hey, take your hat off. <laughs> is Arnold you is hold Arnold, on? You? Hold on. Hold on. The you first. Fuck you first. On you first. Give me my money. You did. You shaved it. I did not shave it. You shaved it. I didn't. Let me we say. Have, we have a bet going in. I don't you know. Give me my about money. About Come what? On, Who's gonna shave their head first? Yeah. Go. Let's see your nasty mop. Same time. Okay. Who <laughs> had yours? Look shaved, man. Look at look at the growth I got going. Look oh at yeah, this. he's got a lot there. Got it. Look at. So you can see the little. I gotta afro. get away from the light. It looks. <laughs> Look oh, how bad yeah. it looks. <laughs> that fucking dad mode, there, boy. He totally left the sides and everything. He's full on Gaetano there, not guy. Look, I got. I saw hair. No, there's one little strip here in the middle. You're both pretty fucking. You're missing bald. the strip in the middle. I think you're more bald than I am. No, no, for sure you are. No, no, bro. What are you talking about, dude? You don't have anything. Oh, no, I've, been yours, I've been trimming the sides. Yours is thinner than his, yeah. I don't think so. This makes me feel good about my hair. Thank you. Look, that's not horrible, bro. <laughs> it's so I just bad. can't see. In, I just can't see that in eight years, nine years, my hair will be that bad. What you know? actor am I? Oh my god, you look like somebody so bad. I can't even think of it right now. I know who you're talking about too. Hat on, instant sexy. Look at this sex symbol. Just go ahead and put a hat on. So I've been covering this fucking disgusting shit up. Is this the guy I'm thinking? Who had, you, who, dude, Ian, who had takes his hair up to here? He's like, I've been, I've been trimming it. He fucking has <laughs> this left. Like, you said not, I could trim the side. I didn't say you could go. You, dude, the razor, you're almost touching in the middle. Guy, look at, look, come close to the camera. Open your mouth. <laughs> no. Do it. Do it. Why? Go on. He doesn't look like Russell Crowe. No, That's not Russell Crowe, this guy. I look nothing like that idiot. Oh, I can't see. Sorry, my people are on it. No, Russell. he doesn't. Well, who the, who's the actor I'm thinking of? Oh, I think Shia LaBeouf. No. He looks like look the good. guy from Home Alone. <laughs> like one guy? of the robbers, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, hey, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about today was this mother. Oh, wait, let's go do some bets first. Okay. I'm going with my Italian brother. What are we betting? Uh, or Jamie. Ugh. 
Okay, if I win, I get to shave my head again. Why didn't James do this show? No, separate bet. Separate, separate, separate I bet. said that to James. I said, dude, you should jump in. He's like, no, I want to be perfect for the Arnold UK. And that's... Look, that's I get that because I was the same with Vancouver. But well, yeah, I mean, he could have done a, both for sure. Yeah, this is a... We pick top it, three instead of five because I don't know five. Okay, fine. We'll pick top three. Yeah, just do a top three. What's the bet? Well, let's do top four. That's okay. Okay. Uh, that pen it doesn't work. Okay. Ian, guy. Don't let Fuad go last. I'll go first. Deal. Fuad second. Why? Because you always get to go last and fucking listen to our shit. Okay. Yeah, you're going second. Then you go you. back I'll and go, change. I'll go, I'll go first then. I'll go first. Good. Go, go, Thank go. You. I'm going to pick uh, Muhammad first. Mm. Go. Guy, you, what well, if some of these guys we didn't look at are really good, like Mustafa Yildiz, like or Harry Harris? Who the fuck is Harry Harris from England? All right, let's take a look just to be fair. Imagine we all pick top three and none of them make top three, and they're all guys we didn't look at. It's happened. Harry Harris. Harry Harris. Let's well, this guy's it. young. He looks young. Too small. Yeah, he's too small. Looks more like classic. No offense, Harry. I think you got a great physique, and one day it will be incredible. But for now, his back double I is actually looks good. Look at this quarter turn; it's fucking sweet. Yeah, look at the back double. It's like nice shape. Needs more muscle, but it looks nice. Yeah, I think if you can keep this shape and get bigger, you can destroy a bunch of people. Or that most muscular, go down, go down, in the center there. Yeah, that looks. Yeah, sick. he's got a great, great physique. Yeah. It just doesn't look like it's going to be. No, no, he needs. He obviously needs like another yeah fifteen pounds on there. You know, I wonder how. I wonder how new he is. I'm not like sure how, that, how young he is. Anybody, if anybody knows, does it say in his profile? Twenty-five year old freak. No. I see. He's good though. He's got a really, really nice physique. Yeah. Yeah. Good flaring quads. Small waist. Good round shoulders. He's got all the body parts. Yeah, hey, it looks really good. He looks relatively young too. Here's some other shots. Yeah, everything is really proportionate. It just needs to be bigger. Yeah. It's weird, his stage shot, this is a stage shot of him, and he actually looks a lot bigger than that, you know? Is he hustling everybody? Look. One second. You think he's the guy that photoshops? Turn your, turn your phone a bit. Small? Uh, it's, you know, it still doesn't look overly big to me. Looks good, though. No, no, no I'm not. Do I listen. look and say that you look better on stage than in your progress pictures, you know? His physique is awesome, but there's no doubt. I just don't know if it's going to be big enough to beat someone like Muhammad or no, M- I don't Muzi or anything like that. He needs more okay. age. He needs more aged muscle. Guy, pick your first with first. Place. Andrea from Italia. Okay, let me just share the screen so everybody can see it. Muzi for guy. Muzi, bro, Muzi, Muzi, Muzi. We're picking first place here. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna go with Muzi. Muzi. All right. Second place, I'm gonna go with. Oh. Uh... Muzi. Jamie. Jamie. Muhammad. Muhammad. Third place, I'm going to go with Roman, Vlad. I'm probably going to go with Vlad. Guy. What? What, what? Wait, what? I picked Vlad. For third? Yeah. I think you said Roman. No, I was saying maybe. You were just speaking out loud. Yeah. I was thinking out loud. Thinking out loud. Um, the guys we looked at were Vlad, Roman, Muhammad, Jamie, Jamie, Jamie Muhammad, and Muzi. We didn't look at Mustafa Yadizi. I can't at, find him. You want okay. to look at Mustafi? No, no, I was just wondering. Um, I can't I'm going to go, 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 go with Muhammad three, Roman four. I'm Muhammad. done. Muhammad. I can flip flop, flop those two. Muhammad. And Roman. Ian, third? I'm going to go with Vlad, third. Vlad, third. And Jamie, fourth. Jamie, fourth. Vlad. Who was Vlad? Vlad was the guy with all the muscle in the world, but a little bit thicker waist. Hmm. The guy that you thought was Italian? I might go with him. No, that's why we picked in a certain order, so you can't change it after you hear Ian's pick. You're right. You can't, you can't make Fuad go first. No, who the fuck are you pointing that black pen at, bro? <laughs> Don't be a hypocrite, guy. You made me go first so that you I can... Keep it up, and I'll take that black pen and paint my nails and then fucking screw everybody over. 
Uh, I'm to- I'm torn for fourth between Jamie and Roman. Yeah, that's tough. I was in the same predicament there. But who do you want on the podcast next week? <laughs> oh, Roman's Roman's not sensitive like that. Neither is Jamie. Um, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Jamie in fourth. So me and Ian basically have the same picks, except I have Muhammad in first. He has Muzi. Uh, so, so the person most likely to get fucking fucked with a cactus in the ass. Is <laughs> no, you're not. No, honestly, you're not because I think Jamie could be second. Jamie could win. Oh wait, if Andre wins, then you're done. Is uh is the Arnold UK yeah. next weekend? Yes. Two yeah, let's. Uh, we should talk about that too, I guess. No, we'll talk about that next week. Yeah, so I heard. I heard. Uh, I heard Andrew Jack was out. The UK. Is it? Is it because he's out because he's qualified, or do you have a visa issue, or what's the problem? He heard Guy Sister Nina was jumping in. Shut up! I'm being serious. Me too. I, I, I would about it more because his stock is high and there's no reason to jeopardize that. And just, I would take that from momentum and ride into the Olympia. Agreed. There's take no that other... time, take that time, use it for being better at the Olympia and exceed the expectations again, once again for the Olympia. How much there's better? no reason for him to do it. Only thing I could come out of that would really be to hurt him. Cause winning you know, that, that comes really out good. of his winning 10 grand and, and no, slightly more momentum, you know, that's not true at all. First yes, of all, I think, first of all, I think it's 40 grand. Second of all, if he beats Mark Hector and uh, Jamie, uh, James, that doesn't matter. He already he already beat bigger name bodybuilders in Texas. No, he didn't. No, he, yes, didn't. he did. No, he didn't. I think he Kuklo. Kuklo. Listen, Kuklo is thin, a thinner, a taller, thinner bodybuilder. He's also it's, been like top eight at the Olympia. That's not the point. It's yet to be seen if Andrew can beat somebody with the thickness that James has, sure. and and the way Mark Hector looks right now is yeah. fucking insane. And, I, yeah, and I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm the biggest saying, Mark Hector, Hector fan in the world. He's still too light in the legs for Andrew. Though. Yeah. I'm not saying he needs to beat these guys. I'm saying if he wants to put a stamp on it and be like, I'm coming. If he takes somebody out like James, who's got all the muscle in the world. Now he's beaten the tall aesthetic guy and he's beaten the shorter, thicker fucking guy. Right. So it just, but he doesn't need to, you're right. He doesn't need to, but he does gain something from, from winning that show. I think it's not enough to, to make it worth it. And I think it's like 40 grand for that show, isn't it? Oh yeah, sure. I was thinking just a regular show, but yeah, it's an Arnold. So yeah, it's probably more. I mean, it's 40 K. It's not nothing. Yeah, you're right. 40 grand. Yeah. How much better do you think he can be at the Olympia from what we saw? Andrew, he could be harder for sure. Definitely be in better condition in the, in the rear. Ah, You know, do you think he's going to have like stripped out hamstrings? Or is that just his genetic? I don't know. I've only seen him compete like once at that kind of level. So I don't know if that's like a 75% effort or if that's a full fledged and, and that's his. Well, he, it depends. So he could play, he could try to play the size game because they're ramming for the Olympia and go completely fucking opposite. And, not, you know, I know. think at the Olympia, you got to be peeled, man. I'm not ready to put him in the top five yet. I, w- I think he's a great bodybuilder. I don't think his first year at the O is going to crack top five. I, I mean, I think it's highly likely. It's highly likely that he is top five. That he'll be up in that first call. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I could see him in the first call out. I don't know if he'll With be five, six. Okay, let's let's pretend everybody's in shape. Does he beat Hunter and does he beat Nick? And does he beat Hottie? Those are three similar bodies. And Bonac, you know, like. And if Bonac shows up like the Arnold. Yeah, it's tough, man. I, I I I need to see them all next to each other. You know, I, I really I really can't tell. That's what I'm saying. That's why I said I'm not ready. I'm not saying he can't be in the top five. I'm saying I'm not ready to say for sure he's going to be in the top yeah. five because Hottie. Yeah, that's Hottie, why I said it's highly likely. You know, yeah, it's one of those things where you're going to have to wait till like he steps out on stage and you can go okay. Well, yeah. I mean, look, we're just playing a game, right? I think this, I think his height and structure. Uh, and and size is going to expose a lot of people's structural flaws in that top six, you know? Yeah, we also have guys like you mentioned, Hottie, Hunter, Nick, that are in the short, shorter structure, stature, heavily muscled. Then you're going to have him. He's going to be the odd man out. Yeah, but he's going to be the odd man out in a pretty sense, not in a bad sense. So it's not necessarily. But you know the Olympia is a muscle game first. He's also like 290, dude. He's gigantic. But he he's has not... to be. He's a fucking mutant. He dwarfed, he dwarfed Kuklo. Completely dwarfed him. But is he filling out the frame the way the way Rami fills out his frame? Uh, in certain parts, yes. In certain parts, no. Yes. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying, right? So it's like, it reminds well, I think me... I you of... could put his, his chest or his arms against Rami's any day. 
But tell his, me, tell me if you think this is are back. No, not quite. No. Tell me if you think this is accurate. Does he look like a better version of Tony Freeman? You saw him in person. I think Tony. Fre- I think he's got more sharp, hard detail than Tony Freeman. I'm not saying he's like Tony Freeman. I'm saying a yeah, better version of Tony Freeman. Yeah, I think I don't see them the comparable like that, but maybe only because of the height and structure. Sure. He's definitely wider than Tony was, but they both yeah, have but a similar. Those, those like crazy deep separated abs. He's got fucking tree trunk legs, you know. Mm-hmm. So I mean, what if he can bring the back up a little bit and he brings that conditioning in his glutes and hams? I mean, that's a that's a lot to ask. I know, but it's also very doable. You know, you're not saying you think he can beat Rami, do you? I didn't say that. No. No, you didn't say that. Okay. No. And what about Hottie? Because Hottie's going to be bigger, but and sharp. <sighs> Yeah, Hottie's tough to beat because his conditioning is fucking just ridiculous. You know, well, and he's, he's going to be bigger this year. Yeah, look, he'll be a little bigger, and his conditioning is just like his conditioning makes it hard for anyone. And his shape and his front double and stuff is actually very pleasing. Um, and he's very filled in. You know, he's he's a very hard bodybuilder to beat. The only shots you really you can gain any ground on him in is side shots. You know. So this is where I'm at in my head. I don't think he can beat Rami. I don't think he can beat Hottie. I think. Nick Brandon potentially one, one, sec- one second one second Nick Hunter are both going to be bigger and I'm assuming Hunter will be sharper and Nick will be just as sharp as last year so I'm not sure he can be either of them either um and then you have Brandon who's a wild card if he shows up like 2019 Brandon I don't think he can beat Brandon either so now you're is he going to beat you is he going to be Bonac is he going to be you know what I mean so then it's like I think the top five is going to be tough man like I don't know. Guy, what do you think? Anything? Any input I, I, on- I'm in agreement with you. Unfortunately. No, it's tough. I mean, it's 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 hard to – I mean, it's even hard for me to place myself in this Olympia lineup. Like, I, I have no idea where to place anybody, you know? Listen, and I don't even forget- know where to place Rami. I don't even know. Is Rami going to win? I have no fucking idea, you know? And we're forgetting about, honestly, somebody who could be – and this is – people are going to think I'm fucking crazy for saying this, but I don't really give a shit. Who, Samson? Yeah, somebody who could be anywhere in that top five. I agree. If he can I, bring, I think the if he can bring thing- this – if he can bring this package in shape, yeah, there is. The only thing is, he needs to be conditioned. Look at this fucking physique, man. If anybody hasn't seen this guest posing yet, look and look. This obviously I crazy. said it fucking months ago. I think he's gonna shock. This looks gonna... crazy, but also this kind of full seven week out, eight week out look doesn't really have a big determinant on a stage look, you know. I know, but one second, Bro. we're talking about somebody in this kind of condition at three hundred and thirty pounds. Yeah, like. Oh my god, he looks ridiculous, man. I mean, it's crazy. His back has come up. Uh all we need to see from Samson now conditioning. Is this condition to be a little bit harder and he's going to be very hard to beat. I agree. Yeah, Samson in shape is the, the biggest wild card up in that top. Yeah. Even top 3 or 4, you know. Yeah, like uh it's going to be Cuz like look, a, pe- a peeled Samson is going to beat a peeled Hunter, I would think. I think a Look at this. I think a peeled Samson beats fucking everybody. <laughs> Hunter, I can see that beating. Bo- I can see that beating Bonac or Brandon. You know, Nick. I mean, Nick's hard. Nick's hard because Nick is so muscular. You know. Yeah, but I just think when you have a physique this big, crazy. I mean, he looks insane, man. I, with every this time guy, I see this, I'm like, what the fuck are these legs for? One, those are fucking ridiculous. And it just makes his waist look even smaller because yeah, his legs are so crazy. big. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I mean, this is. Uh, Look, I'm a fan of bodybuilding, man. I'd love to see Samson just fucking, you know, Roman condition peeled to the nines and everyone just shit themselves. That'd be awesome. You know? Samson's story is fucking great too. Somebody who just come, kind of came out of nowhere in the last couple of years and really like upped his game. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, and I'm not saying this because he's a hostile athlete. Like that's a very, oh, no. very great, yeah. that's a great physique that I think, like you said, is probably the biggest wild card in the whole, in the entire Olympia. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, this is one of those physiques too when people like, you know, glorify the 90s so much. If you took Samson and put him in fucking a 90s, early 2000s Olympia, this guy would be fucking killing it, you yeah. know? Yeah. He would be fucking destroying people. Yeah. I mean, he's got the shape, and he's way bigger than any of those guys that were competing then, you know? And so, conditioning then in the gluten ham department wasn't a, a prerequisite like it is now. It was more like ab development, quad conditioning, you know? The only thing I wonder about Samson is, does he have those kind of glutes that don't get deeply separated? I don't think they need to be deeply separated, but the skin needs to look thin. Thinner, yeah. 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 It just needs to have the appearance of thinness to it. Like Regan never has crazy strided glutes, 
but yeah. you can still see hard. when he pops them, they still look like the, the skin, like if you were to pinch it, would be very thin, you know? Yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. So for the Arnold UK, that leaves Martin, James, Mark Hector, Jamie yeah. Joe Hall. Those are probably the main four names I can think Martin of. Is, Martin is going to be the hardest one to beat in that lineup, I think. I don't think so. I think James can beat Martin. Oh, that's but I'm saying. I'm saying for James. Sorry. I'm I speaking for it, our boys, you know? I think it's... Honestly, I have a battle between Mark Hector and James. I don't... I think Mark Hector will beat will beat Mark. Look, I am, I've said for years, I'm the biggest Mark Hector fan, and I think he fucking looks ridiculous, and the improvements he made are ridiculous. But I don't think his legs are quite big enough, and it looks like his upper body has made a ton of size improvement. So I don't know if, if the illusion will have changed a lot, you know? I think his And legs... Martin has really good legs, peeled ass fucking glutes, peeled hamstrings, you know? Really good back double. The only thing Martin really loses anything on is his arms in the front double. We're going to bet on this one for sure. Sure, I'll bet on look, that one. Look at this. Oh my God, dude, it's fucking retarded. I, obviously, yeah. This is... It's insane. This is Brandon Curry 2.0. Yes, I do not disagree with you even slightly. I mean, look at the side chest. See, but I don't know if his legs are quite there, though. But Brandon Curry won an Olympia with legs that are a little bit undersized to compare to his upper body. Go up to that side. Yeah, look at that. That's just fucking... His shoulders are shoulders, man. What are his shoulders? That is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that, This makes me want to fucking train my rear delts more. I'm going to... I'll take that bet. Look at this. This other... You got to remember something. This other camera... What's the bet? This other camera angle is from down here, right? Yeah, I okay. don't like that. He doesn't look you know, pull, up, pull up Martin then. Pull up Martin, just to be one, fair. One second, one second. Look at this fucking shot. That's yeah. not that undersized. No, no, no. I don't think they're that bad. But I think when you're staying them next to someone like James or Martin with really good legs, with exceptional conditioning, it's 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 harder, you know? I think James... In t- look, I'd, I'd love to see him win the show. I'm, not, I'm a big fan. No, no, know? no. I know, I know. We're not talking... They're just being subjective conversation, yeah. bodybuilding conversation. We're not... Talking yeah. about emotional. Well, pull, up, pull up Martin and pull up Martin. One, one second. I just want to look at this physique for a sec. So if we look at this physique, we try to compare it to James. Yeah. I think the main area he beats James on is width. Because James yeah, has a little... And, and pop. Like, James isn't like a very bubbly, poppy kind of physique. Yeah, okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But James is going to beat him in leg development and overall yes. muscularity and hardness, potentially. Yes. yes. I agree. So they're going to... This is going to be an apples and oranges kind of thing, right? Martin, yeah. I don't know if Martin is going to be able to stand with both of them unless he's the best of both. I don't know, man. I, I Martin just beat a beat, beat Kuklo and Kuklo is a good bodybuilder, man. And he, and he compared really well with Andrew in, in the back and side shots. Did you see, you were there in person when you saw, you weren't, in, you weren't in Texas, were you? No, I wasn't in Texas. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is enough to beat Mark or James. Go, like go, keep going through him. It still right. looks. It still looks like it needs more maturity to me. Keep going. Keep going. Like that's great. It's, I'm not, listen. I listen. I have no knock against Martin. I think he's a no. Great, no I know. I know. I think he's a great bodybuilder. Conditioning looks great there. I mean, that's a very Compton like shot there. That looks fucking crazy. I mean, thick back, good dialed in hamstrings, glutes are peeled, and I just expect him to be better this next one. You know, mm. it's tough. It's a, it it's is a good. Tough. It's a good lineup because if you look at the three of them, they all bring something a little different. Yeah, I know. They're all very different. It's that's I, think, I, I couldn't really put a winner on there, you know? The one thing I will say is I think Martin brings a little bit of both of them. So that Martin is be, very complete. That's what know? I'm saying. It brings you a little bit of look at Martin, like every shot, like his front double's good, his front lat's good, his side chest is good, his side try is good, his back double's awesome. Like there's not really any bad shots, you know? Yeah. Where like I have some shots that are way better than some other shots, you know? Yeah, he's very complete t- head yeah. to toe. Yeah, he he just needs to bring his arms up, and that's really it, you know? Like, that looks crazy good. Yeah, yeah. But, like, go to his front double. That's the only knock you can make is his arms there. You know? I feel like he needs a little bit more, and it could be the photo itself, but I feel like he needs a little bit more hardness to stand with James if James comes in the best. In this shot, compared to some of the later ones, like the side and back shots, his conditioning looks a lot better. Like there doesn't look insane, but then keep going. Yeah, I know. You start here to get it starts to look very different. Yeah, and his, yeah. like in the side chest, even there, like, like here. his quad is thin. You can see the skin, chest that's what, is thin. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was wondering if it was just a photo, maybe standing in the wrong light, because here you see a little bit of graininess and shit. Like, 
Yeah. I mean, I, re I remember when I saw other photos, he looked pretty hard in every shot, you know? Yeah. It's tough to tell from photos. Like what's yeah. what? That's the same photos. You just That's saw. the same photos. Okay. Where the fuck was I here? Those were filtered ones above the rest. I think aren't, I don't know. Best thing he could have ever done though, was team up with fucking branch. Yeah. They're, they're a good pairing. I think, you know, well, because I think he needed a mentor, and I think a Branch, mentor, that's literally what I was going to say, yeah. Branch is that guy, right, that anybody could look up to, so. But yeah, no, you're right. I mean, all three of them bring something different, and then you add Jamie into the mix, too. Again, very different, you know. So let me ask you this. You if you're a judge. And hardness. You have Martin with that kind of completeness and overall kind of crispness. You have, you know, Mark Hector with the kind of bubbly pop, kind of Brandon Curry, you know, Phil Heath physique. Like, there's a lot of different things there. Let me ask you this. If you're a judge, do you – take the width and the bubbliness in the round super round muscle of mark hector do you take the grainy thick hard muscle of of james even though he might look a little bit more narrow or do you take the guy that's in the middle and has a little bit of everything which is martin like obviously it depends how they look standing next to each other you know like if if they stand next to each other and it makes weak points on someone else more noticeable to me. Like if they all stand in the lineup and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I can really notice Mark Hector's legs are smaller than the other yeah, guys. You know? yeah, yeah. Or if I, they stand together and I say, wow, Martin's arms are definitely smaller than the other guys or James's, you know, fucking whatever back is not as thick as the other guys or as wide. Sorry. As, you know, he's not as wide as the other guys. Yeah. Then yeah. If they're being exposed, then I go for the guy that looks the best in the lineup for me. I it's tough. Like, look, obviously my physique is closer like I'm kind of in the middle between James and Martin. I'm obviously far from Mark Hector, even though I really like that style of physique. I mean, those are some of my favorite looking physiques. Um, but I would probably be more ample to go for the overall more completeness of, of Martin. Yeah. Hmm. I always wonder because sometimes when I think back to bodybuilding contests and guys who are very complete but don't have any like super wow factor, they don't. But I think I think he's going to be the best by far in the back shots. One second. So when I think about one of the main contests I think about is like Chris Cormier, Flex Wheeler, Ronnie Coleman, like that era, those guys competing. I always feel like Chris never got the push as much as the other guys because he didn't have a wow factor. Everything was very, very, very yes. complete, right? Very complete, yeah. Everything was so even that he almost looked like not special. Yeah, I agree. I know what you mean. So, and then you get somebody like Flex Wheeler, who's got big, round, bubbly muscle, might not be as complete or as perfectly even from body part to body part. But your eyes are drawn to him. But your eyes are drawn there, right? So I almost that's wonder what I'm that. saying about if they stand next to each other, expose the things, you know? Yeah, but that's what I always wonder. I'm almost saying about Martin is maybe it's so complete that it might end up hurting him. I don't know. He stood. He stood out in Texas to me. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, he stood out there, and I and that and it was mostly because of his back shots. His side shots are good. His front shots are are okay. He's gonna lose some front shots to Mark and and the other guys for sure. Um, but the side shots and the back double, he's not losing that back double to anybody in that top five there. You know, Mark Hector doesn't beat him in back double. James doesn't beat him in back double. And, I don't know and about that. Mark Hector's got a fucking huge back. He's got a good back, but he doesn't have the legs and the glutes and the hamstrings that he has. I don't know. I don't remember seeing any recent pictures of his glutes and hamstrings, but I know his back is fucking huge because of the, his width, obviously. Yeah, he's wide. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. It will be interesting. I'm excited. What do you think, guy? You haven't said a word. Uh, are you scared to hurt? Are you scared foot. to hurt feelings? No. I think it could be a flip flop. Yeah, it's definitely a flip flop. Yeah. Very uh, intense analysis on your part, guy. I think Mark is. I think Mark is more impressive with his lines. Agreed. I think they both bring good conditioning. I think it's going to come down to when they're next to each other and who has the gaps and who doesn't. Well, I mean, look, we could say that about anything. Like, yes. Obviously, we're just playing a game here, playing predictions. None of it matters until you see them on stage, right? We talk exactly. about and Andrew Jack or whatever. None of it, nothing matters. You can't, you can't tell until you see people. We're all just a guess. Yeah, yeah, we're all just, we're just playing a fucking, just, just entertaining. Yes. Um, okay. Let's do some questions before we go. Uh, best pickup lines. Have you guys ever used pickup lines? Oh Have you God, ever used no. a pickup line? No. Guy? God definitely has. He's Italian. I have no game. <laughs> yeah, that's why you use pickup lines. You have no game. How did you get women? You have Man. a fair share of women in your history. How did you get women with no, no game? Them. What do you by mean, them? Cute, by being cute and cuddly. 
They make the move. I don't make moves. So your charm is your game. I guess, if you call it charm. Personality. I don't think that's true. You have game. You just don't know you. I game. will call any of my friends right now. They'll tell you I have zero game. Dude, I know you have game. I don't, you don't have to tell me. How do you know I have game? Because you're Mr. I've seen the way you talk to women. Your game is the nice yeah, I agree. I you're, ask you're, Melissa if I have game. You're, watch. Ask Melissa. That's the point. Melissa yeah. loves you the most, and it's because of your kind of like. Yeah. I have no game, though. I'm I, cute and cuddly her. and innocent. <laughs> that's your game. What? That's not game. That's your, that is a game. That is his game, yeah. That's his shtick. So me being me is my game. When yes. we're on the phone, right? When we're on the phone and we're, you're on speaker, you'll be like, hi, Summer, how are you? That's your game. Yeah. So when I call, when I call Ian, I'm not like, hey, Melissa, how's it going? No, it's your, it's your like caring and empathy for others. Yeah. Oh, because, I, because I'm nice. Yes. But you're overly nice to women more yes. so than men. Yes. That's your game. Not that's not necessarily true. It's He's not a it's nice. not a game. It's not it's I not you guys a fucking spread and here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all have penises. Listen, we didn't say you're not nice. You're overall it nice. Been, it would have been different if I painted my fingernails and made them. But yeah, your charm towards women is different. Of course. Yeah. You have a different demeanor towards women. Yeah, I think he also has a bit of like a a dad vibe that kind of attracts women with their fucking Freudian love for their fathers. You know? Is that why he's getting all these young chicks now? <laughs> yeah, because they all have daddy issues and they're like trying to fill that void with guy. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> How old's the last bite girl? Daddy lean into, guy, lean into it. How old's the last bite girl? 41. Oh, she's Oh, older. okay. Well, that's not going to work. You need, a, you need a young girl. I can't wait for her to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what you need. Maybe you need an older, more mature woman. Oh, now you're going to flip the script? Well, maybe that's you've never tried that before. I dated her. Yeah, but I'm just saying, maybe she, she's back for a reason. Why did you guys break up? Long story. Tell me part of it. His boot. Huh? Tell me part of the reason why you broke up. I was kind of over the relationship, and I was an idiot. Oh, uh, so you fault. should. So you shouldn't have broke up. You were just being a pig. No, I, 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 I wasn't happy, and then. But you're never happy. Huh? Is it capable for you to be happy? Yeah. I was married, <laughs> then divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Caveat there, asterisk. Uh, each of you, each of your hardest body parts to bring up and how you finally did it. Arm synthol next. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I know the answer, but then I don't have the second part of how I finally brought it up because my calves have Your calves up. still <laughs> suck. <laughs> But the one that was the hardest that I did make changes for is my chest and my back, obviously. Yeah. How? Give us an example of what you did. Um, Give well, us an overview. It, it's so s overly simple and it sounds redundant to just be like, I just literally slowed everything down, like yeah. restarted from scratch, like quartered the loads, made sure that my connection was perfect. My form was perfect and that the yeah. intent behind using every muscle was exactly what I wanted it to be. And then I built back up from there. So you didn't add more volume. You didn't add more. No, my frequency. volume, my volume has got less, you know, I mean, okay. for certain things I added a bit of frequency maybe, but, um, but no, I think more of it came down to, you know, like I was one of those guys that just wanted to fucking incline bench and bench press as much as I could. And I just got fucking gigantic shoulders from it. And it, yeah. you know, and, and you know, parts of my tricep, but not the parts I needed. Um, you know, and I think uh, it was really just, yeah, connecting. And I think for my back, you know, a lot of the movements that I thought I was doing for what I was missing, like my lats and stuff, all I was doing was doing the wrong movements. Like what I thought would be like, oh, this is lat training is really like upper back or rhomboid yeah, yeah. training. And I need to kind of be like, okay, these are the exercises I actually need to be doing, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, it was back and my, I fixed it by adding two days and separating. Them. Yeah. I did a width day and a, I did a pull down day and a rowing day and my back exploded in like but yeah that's really just coming down to the frequency more frequency and volume yeah more frequency but more targeted frequency like my pull down day was like five exercises of just pull down so i got okay. wider and then my rowing day was more row like just five exercises of rowing so my back just got better because more frequency but targeted towards where it needed it yeah so because a lot of people would think frequency would just do the same back workout twice yeah no so yeah. uh 
rate your top five bodybuilders of all time. We've done that. What's your favorite type of cheat meal? We've done that. Um, favorite brand and fla fa flavor of ice cream. Does it matter? Have we done this? I don't know what my favorite brand would be per se, but. I think we have done this. I did this with Jose. I don't have a favorite br brand. Ice cream is fucking good no matter what. Yeah, I mean, and what about if I had it at like an ice cream shop? Guy, are you mute? Did you smoke a joint and like lose your voice, voice or something? No. You haven't said anything and like you're so quiet this episode. You didn't ask me anything. Well, you He's ranted about that. gay people for like the first Yeah, the minutes. first hour was me fucking going to get ripped apart <laughs> in the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but I'm trying to slow the comments down, so I'm keeping it a little quieter now. So I know I'm going to get fucking attacked. Uh, for each Olympia win, a year gets taken off your life. How many, None. if any, Olympias would you want to win? One. I take one. Five. Ten. <laughs> no. I want, the record. I want the record. And just get nine, you jackass. Okay, fine, nine. nine. Yeah, but then that plus the actual years we've taken off of the steroids, you were like talking about like two decades of life. Yeah, off you're dying tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. is last day. <laughs> done. You're done, homie. See Bye, ya. bud. But I'll be the greatest bodybuilder of all time ever. Sure. Can you postmark me a few things tonight, then? <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, it, it sounds so stupid when you put it that way. One. Yeah. Go down in history. Names etched in stone. You got the fucking trophy. You got the accolade. I think, I think Ian's right, though. If you say five, then you have a legacy. That's a little different. Yeah, five's a good number. Four or five. Yeah. I'm say three to five. Somewhere in it's there. like Dorian Dorian didn't win fucking 10. You know, he won six. But it's like, that's still like, that's a good, you know, four, five, six. Like, you know. Plus, I don't have kids. So what's the difference between dying at 80 or 77? I don't know. Call Summer. <laughs> Is that my game? Uh, yes, that is your game. Yeah. Uh, what is Paul's day job? He's a border agent. And oh, here. And here's professional some judge. News. Here's what? some news. So, dog went for her final test yesterday. Oh, the dog that shit over your carpet. No, that was Tank. He just got sick. He ate something stupid. I don't know what he ate. Oh, so, okay. You're going to tell us what's wrong with Storm finally. So they did another ultrasound. Everything's negative. Now they think she had a case of rhabdo, which I said fucking two months ago. What's rhabdo when you break down too much muscle? Yeah. yeah. How'd and you then get that? how'd you get that? You were like overworking her. I play with her every day when it's nice. Yeah, I just ran her into the ground too hard. I got to watch out with my dog. He's looking her up to the plow and making her work the fields. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's cutting the grass. But then ready for this? The reason why I've been texting is because we got back from hunting, and I was playing with her. And I went to go throw the Frisbee and her dumbass wasn't paying attention and ran face first into the fucking, my buddy's SUV yeah. and fucking got thrown onto the ground. And now I got to take her, but she's got to get stitches in her knee. She fucking, she like, got a puncture. Dude, leave your there. dog alone, man. Just let, let I'm like, go. oh my God, you're killing me. She's got to get like a stitch or two in her knee. She's got a fucking puncture wound like that. You know what guy's problem in life is, is that he tries to too hard. Like he does too much, you know? No, guy just... Yeah, no, it's too much. Like when we're there, he's like trying to do too much. And like his dog yeah, is like, maybe that's why so many bad much. things happen. Maybe you just need to chill out a bit. Yeah, is, just, that just, is that why you're always on your couch? Just do less. Yeah, nothing bad can happen if you're watching TV. You just lay yeah. there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if you sit on your couch, not you're not gonna get hurt. No, nothing's gonna that's funny. I was, all excited say, to, I was all excited to sleep in tomorrow and I gotta get up and take her to the fucking hour away and get it stitched. You say that shit about me on the couch, like it's supposed to make me feel bad. You know how proud I am? super glue, just glue her up, bro. You know what the problem is? Where the puncture is is right by where she had knee surgery, and that's what it's 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 I don't want it to get infected. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, she's probably gonna get put on antibiotics just because. Yeah. I had to discipline my dog today. It's fucking felt horrible. First time. Smack I dude, just so you know, every one of my animals has gotten the living shit kicked out of it. That's not good. Every I was told when I when I first had my dog, the owner said that every dog you're gonna get is gonna test you at some point, and yeah. you have to fucking let it know who its owner is. And they've tested me when they were younger, and they've never tested me again. But I don't think you have to beat the shit out of them for them to be. Um, okay, so I, you're over. Uh, yeah, you're over dramatizing. Metaphorically. Yeah. Metaphorically. Like my first dog pissed on my couch after I said, let's go out three times. 
Yeah. And she looked at me. She put, I, and she didn't want to go out because it was snowing. I, she got an ass whooping thrown in her crate, and then the crate went outside in the snow for 30 minutes, and she sat there and dealt with it. That's a little much. Well, you know what? She never pissed on the fucking couch again. Shit. Yeah, but, like, okay, so my dog shit in the house, like, four months ago, three months ago, maybe? Uh, look, if they, like, he had, he was sick. Yeah. They no, 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 I'm not talking about that. It was, them when they're sick. No, it was just a random, like, he knows, like, he's learned to ring the bell, and I let him out. But he didn't. He just shit in the hallway, and I was, so I spanked his ass once. Oh, I get more, way more net. That That's that. it. And then he goes to his cage and he, he know, dude, it's gotten to the point today. So I got he, home. Listen, I got home. I popped the trunk for the guy, Escalade and he usually jumps out and runs to the house. But there was a kid riding his bike around our court. He fucking bolted and started chasing this kid. And Summer was calling him. He wasn't listening. So finally I called him. And he came back. But when I came back, all I had to do was yell at him and tell him he was a bad fucking boy. That's and, he was like, and he was like this. Little tower. Yeah. And then they, they know they fucked and up. then he literally stayed like that until I finally said, okay. And then he came and he said, sorry. And then that was it. So it's like, oh, when he had diarrhea the other day, I didn't know he had shit. I woke up and let, I, I wake up and I, he went downstairs and I guess he was trying to get my attention. And I was upstairs trying to get out my the door, bed, yeah. brushing my teeth. I usually yeah. wake up, they come down, I brush my teeth. I fucking make my bed, do what I got to do. And then I come down and let him out. Well, I let him out and I noticed he had diarrhea. When I came back in, they normally come, go on their couch or they go right downstairs to eat. They came back in and they both bolted upstairs. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I went oh. upstairs and I come down and they wouldn't come downstairs. And they were both, they were like this. They knew. And I'm like, up. what is going on? So then I came da down here and I was like, what do I smell? And then I looked and it, diarrhea everywhere. They thought they were going to get their ass beat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously sickness is a different thing, but. I, all I'm saying is I like that a fact that I have him trained to the point now where I just got to raise my voice and tell him he's bad. Yeah. And he fucking knows. I don't have to fucking hit him. I don't have to put him in his crate anymore. I don't have you to You know shit. what's the worst? When I was at the vet, so many people. Ian. What? Where'd you go? I'm listening to you guys talk. Oh, it looked like you were staring off into like the ether. No, I'm just at a guy. <laughs> oh, okay. I was, I was at the vet and I don't know how some people own animals. Why? Because the lack of fucking control that people have over there. Like my dog, when I was in the vet with Storm, she's on a leash by my side and she follows me. She won't even interact with another dog. Yeah. But the second a dog gets aggressive, she goes. Yeah. Like she gets fucking defensive right away. Yeah. And uh, the amount of people that fucking their dogs are going nuts and screaming and barking and running and fucking not sitting. I'm like, this is crazy. This is why people fucking dogs attack people. Yeah, I'm like trying the to, lack of control people have over their animal is disgusting. That's what actually I'm trying to teach uh, Cade right now, because I feel like he gets a little bit fucking when he's out in public. If there's a lot of people around, he let me tell you something. You want to fix that? Buy a shock to, collar. I was, you know, I was talking to Samson about that. Samson, I know, I, I I was taught how to use them. Yeah. Yep. And it gets to the point where you can put the shock collar on, hold the fucking thing in your hand. They won't do a thing if that's on them. Yeah, yeah. Samson told me about that. He's got a collar for his dog. So when they go, because he takes them out to different parks. Yeah. Like big outdoor parks. And he just lets them off the leash. He told me the first couple of times he would take off. And then he got the shock collar. He said, now he just pushes a button. Dog comes right back. It's easy. You're supposed to give him a, a, like a command, like no. Yeah. And then yeah. if they don't listen, it's no again with the button. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you teach them. Yeah, I don't know if I want to go that far. He's he's learning, but it's just taking. Ah, a little bro, little it's listen. It's it's not as bad. It doesn't. It's not work. a bad shock. No, it's like a vibration. It's not. Oh, even you could like actually. A, I actually yeah. put it in my hand and wrap my hand in it and shock yeah. myself to see how bad it was. It's not bad. Yeah, I think I'm just being stubborn. I want to. I want to think that I can get him to do yeah, what I need him to do without. Yeah. But you remember, he's an animal. He doesn't. You know, they, they they don't know words as much as we think they do. It's weird though, dude. It's, sometimes I don't feel like he's just like he's not. I I feel the same way. Like he gets it. You yeah. Know? Like, My dogs do too, but they're still animals. Yeah. Um, if you were to go back to your amateur, you, mm, no, Jesus, Jesus. Favorite gym outfit, guy? Do you have a favorite gym? Why do you wear Crocs when you squat? Okay, so I don't do it for any fucking reason. Besides, I was wearing like regular, like flat, like atomic shoes. And I have very flat feet. That really didn't give me any support or cushion, and it bothered my ankles. Crocs gave you support? Hold on. And then the other day, I actually took my Crocs off at 315 and just squatted barefoot. My fucking ankles were screaming. 
I put my Crocs back on, squatted 405, zero problem. They just, I'm, it's easy for me Who to train. Fuck squats 405 in a pair of Crocs. I, I just posted it yesterday. No, I know. I believe you. I'm like, why it's is squishy? It yeah. just gives me support and my feet don't move. And when I'm doing like extensions or hams, like kick them off and just have nothing yeah. on my feet. Yeah. And then when I need to do a pressing movement, I put them on. Crazy. I just, but what's oh. weird, I try deadlifting with no shoes and I love it. Yeah. Squatting with no shoes, I, my ankles can't handle it. Can't do it. Yeah. Can't I do all. It. I do all my leg training with no shoes. I can't. I I cannot squat with no shoes. I tried it. Three fifteen. My ankles were fucking screaming. I can't do shit with no shoes on. That's I I, I get in the gym and I kick my shoes off like instantly. You know? Yeah, I know. You've created a generation of kids that do that now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, kick the shoes off. You've also the created a generation of people that now do reverse band hack squats and put way too much weight on the bar. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Can you stop doing that, please? I don't do it that often. Oh my god! It's like every time I see a squat video, a hack squat video. Now there's a reverse band on the bike. Yeah. I don't think I like, started that though. Hey, I, I think that's. I think Hunter started that on me. No, you totally started it. Did I? So, and it's and the funny thing is, it's not even like a mini band to just take a little bit of tension. A big, like, big blue one that takes like <laughs> three hundred pounds off. It's like no, this think, fucking thick, green, and they double it. <laughs> no, they I use a green one, and it's single wrapped. It's just around and under. Well, I'm telling you what I see now. I see guys oh, using bands. They're this thick. And they double them, and then they put eight plates on the fucking hack squat. Yeah. And I'm like, this isn't how you get stronger, man. You post put the band on the fucking no, bottom. That's how you get views, bro. <laughs> you put the band on the bottom, and you squat through the band, so you actually get stronger. Well, tension. That depends. It's all you're doing is changing. You're doing it to take no, tension. No, no, that's not true. But that's not true. It does. It, it's not the same. Pressure. It's not the no, same. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's all you're doing. It's same in that all you're doing is both are changing the tension curve in different ways. Yeah, but I think changing the tension curve from the bottom up is going to create more strength faster. And that's well, why depends, that's why powerlifters use it that way. It's, sure, but it depends what you're doing. The, uh, lots of bent, uh, powerlifters will also do like reverse band benching and reverse band squatting. The majority you know? of powerlifters when they're doing reverse band squatting or reverse band benching is number one, to feel the weight to, so they can get what it feels like. Yeah. And number two, if they're dealing with any kind of injury. Or, or, guys, or, or, or to work through. on an area, part of the lift that they're stronger in or weaker. In. Yeah, yes. but the part of the lift that they're that they want to get through most on a powerlifting is through the, the uh, lowest point of the movement. Not the lowest point. It's through no. the sticking point, which is like yeah. halfway and up, right? Yeah. But we're building the most muscle at the longest part of the movement. So yes. when your when your quad is most elongated, yeah, which is the bottom. And what yeah. you're doing when you put a reverse band on is you're taking all the tent, not all the tension, but no, you're, you're taking, taking a minimal portion off. Yeah. Not a minimal when it's a band like this thick, dude. Well, yeah, I'm not, when I'm doing it, it's not that dramatic. Yeah. I guess all I'm saying is if you're trying to build strength. And I'll be look, honest, most of the times I do it is because I get into the gym and the band is already there. So I just, leave it, you know, well, you had a better reason when we originally talked about it, which was your knees were bothering you. So you're trying yes. to give yourself some cushion at the bottom. Yeah. Well, and that's why I, I still continue to do it because it feels more comfortable yeah. And like, look, I don't care. I would put six plates on there and upload it to Instagram. Like, I don't, not, I don't have an ego with lifting, you know? No, no, I'm not saying it's you. So I, you for to... me, I'm just doing it so I can work with the most amount of load through the a majority of the movement, but still yeah. give myself so I can get in the depth without hurting my knees. I'm trying to explain it to newer lifters yeah. that are like doing this now. And I'm like, you're not. Oh, yeah, no. If you're doing it, your knees feel fine. There's no reason to be doing that. The band from the bottom on the way up is going to do two things. It's going or, just, to build... or just do nothing. Just have no band. You don't need a band. No, but the band will help if used from the bottom up because it's going to pull, it's going to create more tension on the way down, which is better eccentric, which is going to create more muscle. Yeah. And then you're also going to get no resistance at the bottom. So you're going to get the full weight at the bottom and you're going to have to press through the, the strength curve. So you're going to build more strength that way and more muscle. Yeah, but you might also be changing like where you're feeling it maybe more on your glutes because there's more tension at the at the top where you're getting more hip drive through it. Like it could change, you know? Yeah. So it's like you're putting a band on, you're like, yeah, I'm doing it, but not all I feel on my hack squat is my glutes. Well, then don't use it. Just use no band, you know? I guess. But, but if you're doing it and you're feeling what you want to feel, then that's great. Use it. When I said the lowest point of movement, like you're benching here to yeah. keep like this point is yeah. like, this is where they would use it to get stronger. Yeah. No. Most power lifters are going to be benching from midpoint up because they're trying to create lockout strength. Lockout that's strength. Why, but that's why, that's you why, they, that's why they use those blocks or floor blocks pressing. there, right? Because they're not trying to build this. No, no, I'm they're saying build... from here to here or here to here is where the... Where there's two points, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's two different points. Yeah. Lowest and then your lockout. Yeah. Maybe I'll have uh, 
Dave maybe, I'll, maybe I'll have Dave Tate on again. I think all of us have no idea what we're talking about. So let's get into professional here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the only reason I'm referencing it is because I just had uh, Christian Thibodeau on the podcast. Sure. Who does know what he's talking about. And he was like basically echoing the same thing I'm saying now, which I'm actually echoing him saying that you're removing the most important part of muscle building, which is the most elongated part of the, of the exercise. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and, like, and I've also heard people say like, well, just don't use the band then and use less weight, which I've done. And it still feels worse on my knees in the, at the bottom with the same amount of tension. So like for me, I just would rather just put the band and put more weight on, just make no, it good. You know? And I've heard that before too, when I used to use bands for everything, I still do use bands for quite a bit of things. It's not the same because it's look, not the same. No. I'll explain to people very quickly. Just take, just take the hack squat or the leg press. My two favorite things to use a band on. If you're doing a leg press and you got it double banded from the bottom up, right? As soon as you unhook the leg press, you automatically have tension. a ton of tension. So now it's just not the weight coming down on you. You have this thing actually pulling down on you. That eccentric is going to help you build more muscle. And then as you're pushing through it, you're not just pushing. You can push harder and build and get more tension because at the bottom, you may have 10 plates, but as you push through it, you're getting 10 plates plus that band that's stretching out. Aggressively increasing. Yeah. So where you can't, if you can't do, let's say you can't do 12 plates on a side, but Put you can do 10. On. Yeah, you can, you can do eight in a band. So now at the bottom, it's eight plates and you can push through it, but then you're getting the, the tension from the band on the way through. That's the part where you're, yeah. Yeah, so it's like there's a, there's a bunch of different reasons why bands are helpful, but... For sure, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. But um, yeah, you are completely right that the reverse banding is overdone and most people don't even know why they're doing it. Yes. Um, Including myself. Uh, do you cook separate meals from your spouse or do you eat dinner with them? We cook completely separate meals all day, every day. Babe, do, do we ever eat together? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Ian, you guys cook separate meals every time? Yeah, of course. Yeah. We don't eat the same thing at all. So if you cook like a batch of chicken... She won't eat any of it. Well, I don't eat. I don't cook batches of chicken. Oh, you just cook one chicken breast at a time, or two chicken breasts at a time, one meal at a time. I'll cook. I'll cook one to maybe two meals at a time. That's so tedious. No. Guy, is that tedious? Yes. It's so quick. Oh well, wait, I heat up every meal in a pan. Cooking, yeah, that's cooking Grounds cooking grounds in a pan takes like four minutes, man. Takes two minutes to heat it back up out of the microwave. If it's in, in the microwave, it's in the fridge. Wait, 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 wait. Are, are we arguing two minutes here? No, what? we're not arguing two minutes. We're over. We're arguing oh, and and just like attacked me over four minutes in a pan <laughs> over two minutes in a microwave. I was I was just concerned. No, no, I'm not even talking about you. We're it takes fucking four minutes to heat up in a pan. It only takes two in a microwave. Listen, we're not talking no, about. No, the I'm on. I'm on the side of I take slower, longer to do. We're oh, talking okay. about. We're talking slower. about chicken. I'd I'd rather cook like I get a value pack from Costco, and I just cook the whole fucking grill it all. Yes. Yeah, but, but yeah, and then but I heat it up are, in a pan. Meals right. that are two days old or three days old taste significantly worse, and I have the time. No, to do chicken. You can. I mean, chicken five six days is good. Well, sure, it's good. I don't disagree that it's going to be bad or make you sick. Look, I'll travel for two days and not even put fucking ice packs in my bag. I'm gonna fuck. Yeah. But if I have the time oh, to cook God. every meal fresh. It tastes significantly better, so I'll just do it. You know. Yeah, I'm too lazy. No, nope, if I'm not fucking feeling bad and, Wait, it's not and, the and not also dry, I'm not training hard enough. I also, I also cook weigh all my food raw, right? So it's yeah, different. That's so tedious. Because like I don't want to double weigh everything. That I'm I'm weighing it raw, cooking it, weighing it again. And or then you can simply it. just weigh the chicken raw once, cook it, throw it on a plate, see what it weighs, and then yield exactly. that every time. Or you could just weigh it cooked, and it would make no difference. Well, because that's inaccurate. Why? Because you have cooking biases now. It's variables. What I have no talking variables. about. I have no variables. You've or you've cooked the chicken breast. You <laughs> weighed the chicken breast before cooking it. Then you cooked it, and then it no, no, drains saying, all the liquid from it. No, now I'm it saying weighs something totally different. Only weighing if you weigh it only cooked, it's more inaccurate. Yes. No. One hundred percent, it is. Why? Because the amount that you cook out of it is different. Guy, why are you talking? Because I am not in any of these. How do you not arguments. understand that? None if of I, them. You're both going to drain. You're draining a different level of fat and liquid out of each chicken breast when you cook it. Right. Not every chicken breast has the same amount of fat content water, exactly water right so you're cooking it, it's going to weigh something different 
What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm weighing the ac- no sense. I'm weighing the actual meat that I'm eating. I'm yeah, not I weigh weighing raw. It. Raw is more accurate. Why though? Because it's going to change. So why wouldn't I weigh it when it's already cooked? Because what it is raw is what you're actually eating. No, it's not because you cooked something out of it. Yeah, you're cooking moisture out of it. Moisture doesn't have calories to it. But that exactly. So why wouldn't you weigh it after it's cooked when the moisture's gone? Because that's not what the actual mic macronutrients of the chicken is. Why not? The protein changes when you cook it. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not even. No, you're <laughs> yes, you're right. Okay, I don't want to be right. I want you to explain no. to me. I'm trying to. I'm trying hey, to Google it. <laughs> because it's not the same. Say if you take potatoes. Potatoes. Okay? That's different. That's different. It's the same concept for everything. No, because you can. Yes, no. it's the exact same thing. Just potatoes are more exaggerated, so it's the best example to use. All right. You're, You're always right. going to change it if Hold you on, it slightly differently. When Hold I weigh my on. ground turkey, wait. When I weigh my ground turkey raw every day, it's always the same amount raw. Always. Hold on. Yeah, when you cook it, if I cook it for three minutes longer, two minutes longer, four minutes longer, if I cook it hotter, it changes it. Wait, he's right. He's right. Yeah. Wait, he's right, guy. Wait, I'm right. It's it's not significant enough to care about, but you're right. No, look, I did my entire bodybuilding career until oh. I worked with Patrick, weighing things cooked, and it I didn't look better for weighing things raw. I'm not saying it's going to make a difference, but if you're talking about what is technically more accurate, weighing raw is the most accurate way. Yes. Yeah. All right. It's definitely the most time consuming. And I, when I write programs, when I was coaching, I did cooked weight for everything pretty much, except for potatoes. Um, Cause it's obviously a lot more easy for most people, but if you're trying to be the most accurate, weighing raw is the most accurate. So if you have a four ounce raw chicken breast and you cook it and now it's three ounces. Sure. Right. But I might cook it tomorrow and it might be 2.4. I might cook it the next day. It might be 3.6. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. But if you cooked it the same way every day and for the same amount of time. But you'd have to cook the same chicken. Yeah, it's not the same. Not Where, to, when it's raw, when it's raw, jump in here it's and raw. When it's raw, it's no, just it's okay. Food. You eat it cooked anyway, so it's not like you're. When it's I, when it's raw, it's just unadulterated weight. It's just it's weight with no no biases whatsoever. Foods, food, <laughs> Fuad's argument is, if I don't you have an argument, it, I don't have on. an argument. I just hold want on. an explanation. If you heat it up in a pan post cooking, you're still taking things out of it. That wasn't so my argument. So that's raw, a good point you're still taking things out of it too. So if you do both, technically, it makes no sense. That makes no sense though. No. Yes, it does. If your argument wouldn't make any sense then. What are you, what's he talking about? I'm kind of lost. Go ahead, guy. Yeah. All right, hold on. If you take a raw chicken breast, yes. put it on a grill. Yes. Are you weighing it before as raw or no? Before, sure. Okay. So put it's it four ounces. Grill. Four ounces you put on a grill. Yeah. Okay. Now what? Now you eat it. Yes. Right? But if you take... No, wait a minute. When you when it when you were done cooking on the on the grill, what did it weigh? Three ounces. Whatever. Three ounces. Okay. Is fine. Okay. okay. And you ate it. Now, you take multiple chicken breasts, like Ian said he sometimes does, and eats it over two days. Following, and takes the cooked chicken breast, which he said he had, does, and, and wait again. And okay, so it's cooked, and you throw it in a pan. Sure. Okay. Where are you going with this? And then you so you it. have eight. So you have eight chicken breasts. And you took out two for a meal, and you weighed them again, and yep. then you put them in a frying pan. Wait, are you? You're, he that, said that, that were already cooked. cooked. That were should already cooked. Them, should I weigh them before or after the pan? Is what you're saying? <laughs> well, my argument is you're you're now sucking even more out of it. Yes. So even your more, argument, even more reasons. So you that. either have to either do technically one or the other. So you doing both is contradicting yourself. Yes. Yeah. Fuad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Okay. You want, me to talk? you want me to talk? <laughs> but, but no one, no one was saying what you said. No one said that. But that was my. But you were making an argument that for both sides it didn't make. Well, you did. Arguing. You said, you said that when you said you cook two meals sometimes. Yes. So you weigh them both, and then you eat one. One goes in the fridge, but no, then you no, have to reheat that one up. No. So this is if you want to cook multiple meals and you're weighing raw, what you do is this. Okay. So say I want to cook five meals. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing 200 grams of chicken per meal. I yeah. take 1,000 grams. I cook it all. Yeah. Okay? It's all cooked. Now I weigh it again. Cooked. And now okay. say that 1,000 is now 750 grams. Yeah. It's five meals. I do 750 divided by five. Dole it out into five meals. But then you reheat it in the frying pan so it loses more. No, I don't reheat in frying pans. That's guy. You just said you did. 
No, you did. I didn't say that. I, so you, I said, if, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So when you have the five meals, you just eat them as is, you don't microwave them? It, it also wouldn't matter there because it's the same weight raw either way. It doesn't matter. That's if you, Yeah. Yes, it doesn't matter. Oh, wait, if you, you heat it up, in a, if you raw, up in, a, if you heat up in a pan, you're going to take nutrients out of it, though. No, no, no. So <laughs> I've already weighed it. It's already, it's already a thousand grams of raw meat, no matter what. I cannot change that. It's That's a true. thousand unless you more. unless you heat it up. No, no. it's still no. a thousand grams. Still a thousand grams. So if, if he takes a thousand pan, grams of not. fucking, if he takes a thousand grams of chicken and cooks it raw. ten times, ten times, it's still it a thousand. It's still grams. always a thousand grams raw. It never yeah. changed what it started as. What are you he's fucking right. he's, he's right. Yes. It's always it's always the same story. That's why we have you on the podcast. He's just smarter than everybody else. I'm just wait. I had a very good argument. You had a pretty good argument for a minute, but he shot it down. No, I was longer than that. <laughs> you were in the game. You were in the game for a shift. I did. I was dribbling. I was, I was coming at you, Ian. Yeah, no. As long as the starting point's always the same, it doesn't matter after that. Okay, but all I'm going to say is this: that's irritatingly. Fucking right! Don't do. Don't do can, can we? Can we fucking phone somebody in on this? Well, there's no. I am right. There's no right or wrong to this. No, no, no he just is saying, right. Yeah. It's he just saying, right, look, but obviously, what is the most convenient is Wayne Cook for sure. Like the, I guess what I'm trying to say to people watching is, don't not do not change your entire fucking life to save yes. the gram or two of, of accuracy difference. Yeah, it's, it's not going to matter. Yeah, we all know Ian's a serial killer. He does this stuff differently. <laughs> no, I just do what my coach tells me, and if he says to wear raw, wear raw. You know. Yeah. I guess. Because like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like try and do all these convert. I know a lot of people that have coaches that do raw measure don't like the irritatingness of it, so they'll do conversions and blah blah blah. And they try. I would if, I, if if that was me, I would literally just take. If he was like eat six ounces raw, I would take six ounces of chicken breast. Cook it once, weigh it. Cook it once, it weigh it, and I'd be and I, that would be my fucking that would be my point. Yes, or, well, that's or, it, or you could do it, or you could do what Ian said and just take out your day's worth of food and cook it all at once. I mean, you could even you could you even still do wait it. You still wait it raw. You know what I mean? I've tried. I've traveled for four or five days and pre cooked all my food before, still yeah. waiting it raw. All yeah. I did was just take okay. If I have five meals a day of two hundred grams, there's a thousand grams a day with five meals for five days. I need five thousand grams cooked, and then I just divide it by 15, 20, whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. It's it's very easy. You're just yeah. double weighing. You're weighing cooked and again, so you can get the division afterwards. Yeah. Okay, two questions, and then we'll end it. Okay. Uh. uh Throw the, throw in the word necessary here and there when speaking to Ian and wind him up. <laughs> what? You don't like the word necessary? Uh, no, because I get these on my fucking Q and A's, and people will be like, "Is it necessary to do incline bench press?" I'm like, "Well, it's not necessary. Not necessary, <laughs> man. Nothing is necessary. Is it necessary for me to eat uh, rice as carbohydrates? What? No. Is it not- necessary for me to weigh my chicken raw? Is it necessary yeah. for men to paint their nails? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> So it's like, I was like, and I, I try and make the point of like, literally nothing is necessary it's other true. than eating and training and sleeping. It's like true. the basis of them, nothing else is necessary. You know, yeah, it's true. You don't need All to right. do anything. There's nothing you need to do. You don't need, you know, to I think that might, you don't need to squat. You don't need to bend over row. To breathe, eat, drink water, sleep. Can I, can I tell That's you it. what? It's might, might be the most irritating thing about bodybuilding or fitness to the average person is that there is no clear line. There's no right way. Everybody has gotten in shape or built a ton of muscle doing something different. So yeah, when you're look, new, when you're new and you're trying to learn what's the best way, they just want information. They're not look, saying it's the best way. If you're they one just, of these science-based people that I know is very popular right now, there is probably actual right answers to all these things. But just because the right answer is such, and I'm just speaking strictly pertaining to training, let's say. Just because it'll say, okay, a bent over row recruits the most amount of blah, 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 blah. Well, if you're doing it and for you with your form, that's not the case. Well, then don't fucking keep doing it just that's because why, yeah, you think that, it's necessary, you know? That's what I love the most about John. John yeah. would always say, the science says this, but this is what I noticed in the gym. Yes. John was always able to differentiate, be, be both people. Yeah, you know, look, I, I, know- think, I think the perfect mix is to start from a viewpoint of science and take what you think is potentially the smartest and most optimal yeah. route and then yeah. build your own out of that based off what you see and what you feel and your personal feedback. I just think when people say to you, is it necessary or is this the best movement or is this the best that I think there are so many different opinions 
Yeah. That when you're new, you're like, what the fuck? Do I believe these well, guys look, over here? Or no? a beginner about how I train certain body parts now, like, I mean, certain things like my back or my chest, like certain things that I'm really trying to bring up, I do 99% machines, you yeah. know? But when you speak to someone new, they're going to be like, well, you don't barbell press, you don't dumbbell press, you don't, these are necessary. But I'm like, yeah. well, maybe, maybe for yeah. some people, you yeah. know, maybe for some people they're necessary to get the best gains, but I did them for 10 years and I'm finding what I'm doing now, I can feel better and I'm making more progress with, you know? Is there a necessary rule that you can apply to everyone that you can think of? Um, you need to eat, sleep and drink water. Like I said, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, what's next? There's not one hard and fast rule I can think of it, especially in training or for, okay, well you need, you need to eat protein. It's necessary to eat protein. It's necessary to train hard. It's Doesn't necessary to be well, hold on. It's necessary to be. Wait consistent. a minute. Go ahead. You can build. No, there's off, there's probably some really, without, without training hard. I think there's lots of very good bodybuilders that do not train very hard. Yes. Yeah, I guess. If you're genetic, I think genetics can carry you a long way for sure. But yeah, for the I, average I, person, yes, you should train hard. If you, it's optimal to train hard, we can say. You know, if you want to be the best body you can bodybuilder you can be, it's optimal, but it's absolutely not necessary because some people can do it. You know. What about consistency? That's pretty necessary to to, to for who? Necessary. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? Listen, Ian's for right. Michael Lockett, probably not. You know. <laughs> you know, I saw a picture of Michael Lockett recently. He still looks like he could go on stage like next he looks week. The same. He's probably <laughs> eating two meals a day and doing CrossFit. You know? All right, let's move on. Uh, is cheesecake is cheesecake a cake or a pie? Cake. Well, it has cake. In I would, pie to me is always filled. I agree. Well, technically, is a filling. But isn't cheesecake have a filling? Under? Yeah, because it's a crust that you're filling with that stuff. Like no, there's, there's no pop. crust on the outside. Like when you say, when yes, you say, is. when you there's no crust on the outside of fucking cheesecake. Depends on, on the, the cheesecake. Pie, apple pie has crust over it. Blueberry pie, crust over it. Not all, not all pies. No, not all pies are covered. Not lemon meringue pie, pie covered. is not covered. Key lime pie is not covered. Chocolate oh, cream oh. pie is not covered. Banana cream pie is not covered. Yeah. Okay. Mom's cream pie. Not <laughs> Your mom's cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> Whose mom are we talking about here? I don't know. We're just not talking about anybody. That's, a bad, that's a bad word to use. I, you I, know, I know. Sorry. Mom, your cream pie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that cream pie made you, guy. Uh, um. <laughs> No, a lot of there's a lot of pies that aren't like pumpkin pie. They're not covered. Let me ask. Right, you're right. You're right. Babe. Ah, he said him right. That's the first time ever. Is I said cheesecake that. a cake or a pie? So they both one and the same then? A cake or a pie? Is it? I don't know. It's called cheesecake. Yeah, that's what I said. It's not called cheese pie. That's exactly right. Cheese pie. Cheese pie. <laughs> That's nasty. But that's what I said. It is. It sounds so Italian. Get the cheese pie. Uh, yeah. There's so wait, a, so the pies a, and cakes are essentially the same. So carrot cake. But wait a minute. There's a crust underneath a cheesecake, isn't there? Like, doesn't isn't there like a base? I think there's a base on every cake. And pie. No, and pie. not on every cake. What cake doesn't have a base? Chocolate cake doesn't have a base. It's just cake. Graham cracker. Every. No, it does not. What are you talking about? You don't know your fucking baked goods very well. I think oh, actually, all right, two, all right, two sixty. <laughs> <laughs> from, what I'm, from what I'm reading on Google, it is indeed. <laughs> I can't stop eating. <laughs> what what I'm he's gonna, yeah, he's guaranteed gonna get off an Uber Eats pie to his house. Can I tell you something? Every time we do this podcast, we talk about food. I'm like, I gotta order. I, I, get, I get these cravings, and I'm like, I gotta order some food. All right, look. It's it it's not a cake. It is a pie, I believe. Okay, what? look. This is Scott. Wait, we have a different discussion here going. Wait, that's chocolate not what cake. Was, there's no. That's fucking not what cake. I was talking. Okay, that's not what I you was. You said talking. there's a base to every cake, and I was saying there's no base to cake. That's this not. Is, this is a cake. No base. This is a cake. No base. Yeah, you're wrong. Oh, wait, so, okay, so then how do you differentiate the two? Well, because a pie has a base. What what what's the difference between a pie and cake? Listen, let me read. Look it. A pie let me has a fucking read. I have the answer here. I One second. It. I'm showing guy. A pie has a base. Look. Yeah. 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 A cake doesn't. But like pumpkin pie right there, that's almost the exact same fucking format as a cheesecake. Let's see. Yeah, you're right. Pumpkin pie and cheesecake are like the exact same thing. Well, that's why I said because cheesecake has a has a bottom crust to it. Yeah. Yeah, it does. yeah like this. Look. 
or like and this. It, can, it can even have a side crust too yeah you know yeah, like this one has, this one has a, side a side crust, crust. yeah well, that big one in the middle that's got side crust would you like to hear the actual answer yes please I guess, cheese, the structure of cheesecake is composed of a somewhat pastry shell and custard like filling and it sometimes contains fruit despite the confusing terminology cheesecake is by no means a cake also since cheesecake isn't topped with pastry it is technically not a pie it technically it says it's a tart but that seems silly it's a pie <laughs> fucking hell i got even more confused now it's a pie. Yeah, it's, oh a pie. it's a pie. <laughs> you guys are so stupid. <laughs> it's a cheesecake pie. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm laughing anymore. What's guy laughing so hard about? Because we he's just the way he, he sounded like Rain Man. He's like, <laughs> like Who we're did? like guy, because he was like, I was going through the pictures, like he's like, there's there, there's a side crust. There's a side crust. Just the way he said it. He sounded like a fucking like Rain Man when he said it. Anyway, okay. So it's a pie. It's a pie. Yeah. So cheesecake is not oh. a fucking cake. No. It is. So wait, read it in, in. I, I didn't hear. <laughs> I didn't he wants hear you to read it again. A word you said. Not but one word. Said, but it said an example like this, yo. Boston cream pie is actually a cake. It's not a pie. I thought Boston cream pie was a donut. No, that's a Boston cream. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and that's just the, the name that they call it at. I thought Boston yeah, cream right. pie was a donut. That's a pie. <laughs> You're right. Oh, no, don't take <laughs> that in. No. <laughs> my search my history is not that bad. It is a pie. Okay. It's going to be all fucking pies now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Melissa wants cheesecake now. That's what I want. See, me and Melissa are on the same wavelength. That's what I'm thinking. I got fucking tears in my eyes. My abs were cramping. I'm for sure going to get off this podcast and order fucking cream pie. <laughs> you're going to order cream pie or you're going to go give a cream pie? <laughs> what, which, which way are we going here? Summer. Ding, ding. <laughs> cream pie time. <laughs> Guy, you're fucking retarded tonight, man. Um, you wanted me to talk. All right, fuck it. I think that's it. We're just gonna end with us laughing about pies. Okay, last question. That's, that's... Last, last, last question for guy. Why guy? Because this first date ideas. This guy wants first date ideas. Fuck. Oh, like where to go? I think lunch. Lunch is the best first date idea. Or coffee. Coffee is even better. No. It depends how much you like the girl. If you're not sure, coffee is quick. I never and out. just had like a coffee date. I have. I haven't. Dude, coffee's great because you're not stuck there for fucking two hours. You can go and have a 15, 20 minute coffee. What's and... the best first date, babe? Say coffee. Dinner and drinks. I was going to say dinner. Courtney? No, that's only if you really like the girl. Then it's dinner and drinks. Well, if it's a first date, you don't hate her. No, but I'm saying like if you kind of know her, maybe you're friends, maybe you've been introduced before, then you kind of know who she is. Maybe you'll do dinner. But if you just yeah, but met having girl, a cup of coffee, I feel like there's less to talk about because it's just you two. There, you two. Melissa and said Melissa said dinner only because then it's it's good time to drink alcohol and it makes it easier on a first date. That's a good point. Yeah, I don't really drink ever, but no, but that's a good point. Like me and Summer's first date, I think we sat at the bar because the table wasn't ready. We sat at the bar, we had a drink, and then we sat down, kind of eased everything a little bit. I feel like, like when you go out to eat, there's more to talk about because there's more things going on and more like food, this, here, there. Whereas coffee, it's like... I just so, like... Coffee's a little more casual. I agree. Can I tell you? I think, I think coffee's more intimate because there's it's there's less going on. More I think, intimate. I think a cardio yeah. date is the best first date. You're an idiot. No, <laughs> because then you go, you do some cardio, you talk, and then you don't have to see her again. You're Bro, just you're sweaty fat mess there's no way you're doing first that's date. why it's so good because i don't want to be a fatty sweaty fat mess at Eddie, dinner a fatty mess i don't want to be a fatty sweat mess at dinner i can do it on the cardio on the treadmill and i'm sweaty it doesn't matter you're just, that's that's no, you're if you have anxiety invite her to the fucking treadmill yeah because then you hide so you your anxiety sweat and not worry about it yeah right. Melissa said if a guy asked her ever asked her on a cardio date she'd say this guy's a fuck you're not asking her on a cardio date that's not how it works i wouldn't meet a girl well. and be like hey do you want to meet for cardio? 
You want to, you want to, you want to go to no, the I'm gym? I'm saying, yet? let's say, you know, a girl from the gym, right? Think about our crowd. Let's say, you know, a girl from the gym. Okay. Oh, you know, you're doing cardio. You want to, you want to do some cardio tomorrow? Like you want to meet up and we'll do fucking cardio together. And it's like, you get, you get to meet her at the gym. That it's, not really, it's not really a date. That, sounds yeah, see, that is not enough of an official date for it to work. But that's, that's not perfect a date. because then you get to know her, but it's not official. So it's no, no I stress. think she needs to know that it's a date and there's intentions behind it. That, I think important. after the first date of My cardio, hands got sweaty thinking about asking girls to do cardio. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I think after... That's how it, uncomfortable that is. Listen, I think be. after the initial cardio date, then you know if like, she's a loser or not, then you can ask her to no, dinner. I, I don't disagree that there's probably a girl out there that might entice that type of thing and be and think it was good, but I think for the general, that's not a good idea. But I'm think I'm thinking of our audience being a whole bunch of gym bros, right? Okay, yeah. Right. I'm not thinking. I'm not saying for the average dude. Well, I'm going to tell the gym bros don't date gym girls because they're all crazy anyways. Look, all I'm saying is if you don't, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, if you don't know you like the girl for sure, I think lunch, coffee, something simple is easy to get out of. I'm a dinner guy. Let's go out for dinner. But what if it sucks and you're stuck there? What? What if it sucks? Then you fucking throw 50 on the table, say, I got to run to the bathroom, and you bounce. <laughs> you just don't come back. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Adios. Assalamu alaikum, sweetheart. <laughs> Every place has got a back door. Yeah, I guess that's the most standard first date is dinner. Yeah. Any for, uh no. I've done one coffee date in my life. All the rest were, were dinner. Man, me too. Is that the girl you got laid with right after? Who? I don't know. Wasn't there some weird story you told? I don't know. Is this my story? I don't yeah. remember. I don't remember either. You just give me context so I can tell it in front of my wife. No, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> not what about the bear. what about okay? Not poking if, the bear. if we're talking Come about gen, if if we're talking about general public, what about just a drink date? Hey, do you want to meet for drinks? Yeah, look, if we're talking general public, yes. In the fitness industry, obviously, because drinks because drinks you can bounce on also. You can have a couple drinks. Yeah. It sucks. You can what happens if you really don't drink like me? Like I really don't drink. Uh, you can well, then you fucking man up because you're trying to get a girlfriend, guy. Yeah. Have a beer. Shut the fuck up. When I started with Melissa, I was fucking drinking every weekend because she was, you know? Fake it till you make it. <laughs> I love alcohol. It's great. And then yeah. after, <laughs> fucking right. And then after are, we gay? You, are we official? Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, after you get laid, then you'd be like, oh, I don't like drinking anymore. Fucking you gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, going, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to clean things up, you know? Mine. <laughs> all right, guys. Fuck. Uh, all right. All right, guys. Do this next week. Yeah, we'll see you. Okay, boys. Peace. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>